Hello. Welcome in. It's another day, another week of finish. Um, I don't know what to say. Um, I've been doing these so long, you think I'd be better at it. <laughs> but progress is slow, though I have had a few viewers say that compared to my first few streams doing this, I am actually a lot better. It doesn't really feel like it, but I'll take the, the encouragement for sure. And, and you just got to believe in the process, no matter what it is uh, you're working on. Um, today, we're going to do a quick Duolingo lesson. You know, I've been near the end of this for forever. I think part of the reason I'm hesitating is that, well, I want to keep my streak going, but I don't want to keep doing finish on Duolingo because I'm literally at the very end. I don't even know if I can keep getting uh, credit by practice. I think there's probably some way I could keep doing exercises and stuff. And finish. But I'm just, I'm kind of tired of all the finished sentences. And so um, I might switch to another language. I don't know if I'm going to stream that, but uh, that's just kind of the idea at the moment. So I'll, I'll probably keep this going, maybe with Swedish. I think it's probably a, a nice thing to do in the background to start learning Swedish on Duolingo. Um, and it is tempting to make that into a stream, but I don't know. I, I feel like streaming takes so much time. <laughs> And uh, I, I mostly enjoy it, but there are other things I got to do with my life, you know? Um, so, well, anyways, that's just kind of where we are with Duolingo Finnish. Um, and then I've, I've tried to upgrade my Finnish studies a bit. Um, for a while, I was doing the Selko Utisa, the clear news in Finnish. So it's like simplified Finnish, but it doesn't feel like simplified Finnish to me. It feels like insanely difficult finish <laughs> like this is easy finish duolingo and then you get here and it's just like the finish you read here i i, I can i even read this first sentence here well, i probably know a few of these like holipus means government i know i learned neuvo i learned that but i don't remember what it means um yeah Sorry, I just had a moment where I was like, am I actually streaming right now? Because I'm, I'm, I've one time I started a stream or I thought I started a stream and I was just talking to myself, just going to town talking. And then it turned out someone in the chat was like, hey, when's this going to start? And then I was like, oh, and I didn't press go live on YouTube. So I think we're good. <laughs> I hope. Uh, so, yeah, something about the government. I mean, obviously, it's like government related from the photo, but and then something Kesku Stelavat. Uh, in the center, but like it centered? I don't know, it, but it sounds like the verb for to center. Tulavina, don't know what that means. Maybe something with the verb tula, like to come, or tule. I don't, I say I don't even know the infinitive of that, but we're just going to say it has something to do with that. Paivina, something on the day, right? That's my best guess, something to do with paiva. And then there's uh, mahan mutosta. No, no idea. I forgot. Something muto is a change, right? And, and yeah, and I learned that's Duolingo taught me that. I know that. And then uh, ilmasto asioista. Ilma means like either weather or evening. Or no, does it just mean the weather? Ilta is evening. Ilma is weather. So it's like weather... And then as Asia means thing. So maybe it's the weather thing. Again, I don't know. And then it seems like it's a plural. Asioista. Weather weather related things. Right? So that's... See, this is why I'm like, I can't even translate one sentence of this. So it just feels like it's too hard. And probably part of the problem is it's very specific uh, vocabulary that, you know, I'm not going to be using in my day-to-day -day life. Which leads me... To my next point, uh, which is I've been practicing just using Google Translate or DeepL. I've used this as well, but I like to try and speak Finnish and then I'll type out whatever I'm thinking in English, trying to say, to see what Google Translate suggests. Uh, and then also so that you guys know what I'm trying to say. And this has been the most effective way 
for me to learn Finnish. And I've done a lot, bunch of other things. Like we're, we've been doing forced Finnish. I've got these dumb, <laughs> not, they're not dumb. It's these flashcards uh, that I created using Duolingo vocabulary. Um, that's been kind of fun. We might play around with that. But yeah, that's, I don't know why I just wanted to give a quick recap of all the various study methods I've employed on this game. But yeah, okay, hey 27. Welcome in, welcome in Lorelai and Vlad. Good to see you all here. Um, so, Keskustella means debate. Okay. They debated. Or they were debating. Are debating. Um, that's it. that's interesting, because like Keskus means the center. So it's sort of like, the, I guess, to debate something is to center it. I guess to put it in the center between everyone. Is that maybe a good explanation? Um, hi, you've done nothing and you are exhausted. <laughs> Lorelai, I know that feeling. I woke up today. I didn't sleep super well. I mean, I slept okay, you know, but I just was feeling tired. I kind of had a headache. I didn't get as much done today as I would have liked. But, you know, you just got to take those days as they come. And then just know that tomorrow you're going to wake up feeling different. Or hopefully you'll wake up feeling different. And if not tomorrow, then hopefully the next day. And ilmasto is climate. Ah, that makes more sense now. The, the thing is, I'm like, I'm kind of on the right track, right? Like, I can recognize parts of words, but then it's like, ah, oh, I just don't get that. I don't get the final 20% of it, which is necessary. You know, like, it's either you understand it or you don't, right? It's like, you can't just 80%. It's like, I actually have to know what the word is even though I'm kind of close, but maybe it makes it easier for next time to heal muscle, climate. So they're discussing about like climate change, right? Was that all? <laughs> Let's go back to that since you guys are helping me out uh, in this sentence. Um, so yeah, it was at Mutosta, something changes. Mahan, is that like country changes? Ma is country. Maybe Mahan also means something different from country. In the same way that il must though mean something different from weather um so yeah anyways um did we start with a rant well i started with a recap but the recap involves little mini mini rants throughout it all right we're gonna do our best not to get too sidetracked uh right off the bat but you know that's just what we do over here yeah <laughs> it's a small rant exactly oh uh, yeah how are you guys doing today um, enjoying the nice weather. I went for a long run yesterday. It was it was glorious. I loved it. Went out into Kesko's Puisto and just, yeah, the weather's really nice because it's just like the perfect temperature, right? That once it gets above 20 degrees Celsius, it's like, it's too hot, you know? I, I'm turning into a fin. It's so funny how like in Texas, that would be like the coolest summer day or the coolest like spring day. You know, to have that kind of weather. Um, but, yeah. Okay. Maybe we can... Um... Oh, Mahan Muto is immigration. That's okay. Now, it's funny because it's coming back to me that people have taught me this on stream. I'm, I'm sure that there is a clip of me in one of the previous 28, you know, Finnish language learning streams where... Someone explained, oh, actually, Mahan Muto is immigration. And it's kind of like country changing, right? Um, yeah, country change. That makes sense. Yeah. 27, you did run yesterday, and after the run, you got ice cream from an ice cream van. Nice. I often run past um, ice cream trucks. There's one called, like, Ape Gelato. Actually, you know, I'm thinking about that. Um, ape. No, not into English. No, I feel like. Hold on. Why do I? I'm gonna. I'm. I feel like it means B in Italian, but I don't know. It does mean B. Look at that. Ape. Um. But I don't know why it's called B gelato. What is what does the gelato have to do with bees? Do they have honey flavors or something? I don't know. 
or it's just their it's just their branding you know maybe that's just what they do um but anyways okay go back to wait go back to english to finish that's what we're gonna yeah not, not ape but there's a little it's a really cute little it's not even a van it's it's more like a motorized cart. It's this cute little mini miniature truck. That's maybe the best way to describe it. Like literally the cab of this truck can seat one person. And they, they look like they're out of a cartoon or something. You know, like this would be in some, I don't know, like, I don't know, like a kid's uh, like Pixar movie or something, right? Where it's just sort of like, whoop, 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 like puttering along. This, Anyways, yeah, so they, I often see them around. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever tried any of their gelato now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Um, inland moving. Mahan Bozo. Inland moving. Okay, that's, that's helpful. Because it's like going into the land. Mahan. Um, yeah, you got to gotta get the calories back. Yeah, with that ice cream. That's what I'm talking about. What you, hey, guys, what are your favorite uh flavors of ice cream um mine i'm i think like i never would have said this as a kid but as i'm getting older just vanilla ice cream i think is my favorite just like a solid vanilla ice cream i love it but i love pistachio but not any but it's like vanilla ice cream i'm pretty happy with no matter what brand it is or anything but pistachio is one of those things it's like Either it's really good or I don't like it at all. Especially when you get it at the store. I'm going to go on a... I know this is turning into a rant, but like I don't like it when the store brands make the pistachio look like it's got radioactive materials in it. It's like neon green. And they even put little chunks of the pistachio and it, the texture is all off. Like, no. It needs to be smooth, creamy, and delicious, you know? But that's just my take. I also, growing up, I probably would have said my favorite was Oreo or, or cookies and cream. If you don't, you know, I don't know, you don't want to brand it, but uh, yeah, those are probably my favorites. And then I also really like mint ice cream, but not mint chocolate chip again. Maybe I'm just like, I don't like bright green. I, I, maybe I also don't really like the chocolate chips in ice cream. I'm not a huge fan of chocolate ice cream okay but i was never really like i never chose it if i would only choose chocolate ice cream if it was between chocolate and strawberry and i'm like but actually now i really am starting to like mango and coconut oh those are really good a mango sorbet i guess i don't know if it's mango ice cream i don't know technically what the difference is but uh oh i do love that and a nice warm day should we just take a break and I'll go have an ice, an ice cream right now? <laughs> and I will reconvene class in 15 minutes. No. Um, so, yeah, anyways. Ape also means food in Finnish. It's, it's an old expression not really used. So, Vlad, maybe that's a good point in why they chose Ape. And, well, on their, I think what helped is on their logo, it shows like a bee. Or some some imagery that would to me indicate like the a fly or a bee or something, um, and that's why I was like, oh, I think it means bee in Italian. Um, but maybe there's also that little play on words. In that's interesting. Um, how is Tyler's utensils? No magpies here. Look, it's Aruka. All right, and I, this is how confident I am. I'm typing it into Finnish. Boom, fork. And then uh, the magpie is Haraka. Wait a second. Did oh no, I I I still misspelled it. But I got I got the double A, and then Haraka, Haraka is magpie, right? And I didn't misspell that, right? Okay, thank you. What eight? Tit is a running joke in Finland. 27, what does that mean? You're going to have to explain that. I don't know what that is. Oh, appetite. Appetite. <laughs> Ape tit. <laughs> Appetite. What is it? Wait, I, what's the joke, though? Is it just... 
I don't know. I, I'm sure there's some. I, I'm, you know what? I'm sure our imaginations. Um, uh, mint and then kuningatar, bilberry and raspberry. Ooh, that does sound good, Lorelei. Uh, yeah, mint with blueberry. So actually, this is the other thing. When I have my vanilla ice cream, I add frozen blueberries, or I guess maybe they're technically bilberries. I never, I don't know what berries are anymore because the blue, what I would consider a blueberry is not a blueberry for some people in Finland. It's a bilberry or something. But it's like a wild blueberry, right? Those ty those smaller ones. Oh, I love that. And then I, I've already told you guys this, but I, I get those digestives, right? And they're like the perfect combination of salty, sweet cookies. And I crumble them up and drop them in on top of that ice cream. And it's it's like having the cone of the ice, you know, like of whatever, right? It's oh, it just, it, the flavors mix so well. Um, and Vlad, you'd like chocolate and hikari ice cream. I don't know what hikari means. I'm going to look it up. Hikari. Tiger. Oh, I, well, I mean, it's kind of obvious now that I look at it. Yeah, tiger. Tiger ice cream. Um actually, hold on a second. Let me look this. Ikeri. Oh, there's like all sorts of Ikeri. Uh what is this? Yeah, dele. Hold on, I'm gonna show you guys in a second. What? We should do a tiered list or something. It, look at this. Which one is it? Wait, this one is saying no. You don't get this one. Don't eat this one. <laughs> uh, let me look up. Uh, it was you said chocolate soupla. Does it show? I don't know. But this is pingvini. Why is it pingvini? I guess tikari is not a brand. It's the type of, like, you get this striped, right? You get some sort of striped whatever mixed into it. Well, more you know. Okay, hold on. I can't see chat anymore. And around. Um... But anyways, yeah, sorry, going back to it. <laughs> Gelateria Nuvole in Turku does a blue pistachio. I I would for sure try that. Maybe if I go to Turku, I'm gonna look I'm gonna look into the blue pistachio from Nuvole. Uh you like the bourbon vanilla twenty seven and cherry ice cream. Ooh. I think I might like that bourbon vanilla. If it's got kind of the smoky like at least in the US I know we like there are some really interesting, uh, what's that, like ice cream shops now that mix the craziest flavors, like really savory flavors in like very unexpected ways. It'll be like, you can get like a, uh, a lavender, a smoky lavender, a smoky lavender honeysuckle ice cream. And like, and it's, it's some of the best ice cream you'll ever have. It's all, I mean, it's homemade and like, Wow, it's it's really it's really incredible how much they're able to achieve with different flavors. That was, uh, you know, I don't know if there, I've seen many places like that around Finland. Um, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> um. Oh, it's a food company, Appetit. I don't know. Oh, I, is that a food company here in Finland? Vanilla Tyler, who would have thought? Um, just tikari, not sukla tikari. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So it's, I guess, yeah, you, it's just this one then. This one that has some, like, what what flavor is that that's mixed in there? Oh, it's like, it's caramel. Or no. Oh, well, it's keramayatala, so cream... Cream ice cream. <laughs> cream ice. Hirtea tikeri. Yeah, what is this? I, I assumed it was like some orange flavor. 
because I, I guess I saw this, right? This has orange on it. But then I was like, oh, maybe it's caramel. It's just the color is a little, you know, but I think it's actually orange. Um, it's okay, yeah. Tiger ice cream, vanilla ice cream with orange stripes. Orange marmalade. Okay, Vlad, thank you. Yeah, sorry, I should read to the bottom of chat before I start. <laughs> Bourbon vanilla has a light yellow color. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had that. I'm going to have to look for it uh, next time. You know, I had a flavor of ice cream I did not like. Um, it was like... it's Oh, oh, this is also why I didn't like it. It was advertised as mint strawberry ice cream. And I was like, ooh, that sounds interesting. And then when I tried it, it was not mint. It was peppermint. Peppermint is a completely different flavor from mint. I felt cheated. And I, I, like, I, I'm, I like peppermint like somewhat, like during Christmas, but oh, it actually, it made me feel kind of sick. I don't know. Sometimes when you have a, when you have something and it's so sweet and the and the flavor is like so strong, I, I felt kind of sick afterwards. And I still have the, whatever the carton in my uh, my freezer. I don't know if I'm gonna finish it. But yeah, sometimes you know you just you gotta live life. You gotta take risks. You gotta try new ice cream flavors. All right. No one can say I, I'm not a risk taker. Really putting myself out on the line there with those unconventional, falsely advertised flavors. I think that's what I was so frustrated. I was like, this is peppermint. Like, this is not. It just felt like I was. Like, I, I, like, I like a candy cane is peppermint, right? But it's, it's more subtle, you know, and it's not, it has a very slow release. When you have peppermint in ice cream, it just, it's all released simultaneously because the ice cream melts you know, and you're swallowing it, and it's like so much, it's too much in my nasal cavity, all right? I'm not used to that. Um, but yeah. Uh, the pina, cola, pina cola flavored cha. What? <laughs> That's, that is weird. Is that in here? Is that in this list? I don't know. Um, I mean, this is good. I like this branding, by the way. You know, like, I feel like this, whoever did this branding, good job. You made these, you made each one visually distinct. I mean, I wish the, the, vi, the whatever, the, it was a higher resolution photo, but looks good, you know? Um, I like watching those videos of people, like, redesigning logos. Am I the only one? Oh, look at this. Where I want to see this photo that shows all of them next to each other. This is just an ice cream stream now. How do I? And what? Okay, hold on. Open image in new tab. How about that? Oh, wow. Great. Look at that. What a great photo. <laughs> but down here it said it's 1080 by 1080. I don't want to go to Facebook to see it. I just want to just on principle. This is well, do all photos have to be such low resolution here? But anyways, there's my, my um Lidl has the bourbon vanilla. Oh yeah, the the pina colada. I thought I I assumed that's what you meant when you said pina cola. Pina colada. Yeah, I didn't know if maybe that was another way of saying it. But I don't think I ever I don't like pina coladas like as a drink. The flavor doesn't pina colada have uh, pineapple in it. I don't dislike pineapple per se. But when it's mixed into things, sometimes it's it has a very overpowering flavor. Um, so yeah. 
Here we go. Look, I love... We're starting to stream off with nice things. You know? Um... Let's do let's do a quick a uh, unit of Duolingo. But first we gotta hydrate. Actually, Vlad, I think you're right. Let me look this up. Let's just go to their website. Keep it we'll keep it in fin hold on this is important right first of all this little can i zoom in on this like a bajillion this little logo hits the spot you know it's simple it's clean it scales right a lot of people don't pay attention to that when they design logos they design little details that when it scales down, they disappear. And the either logo becomes unreadable, right? Or just uh, too cluttered. And I like that they kept it simple. And it's got the big eye. It's a cute penguin. I also like that it's a picture of an animal that's not being consumed in the product, right? Like how milk companies use dairy cows in their advertising or butter companies i like that it's just a penguin living his best life right somewhere in antarctica or possibly in the galapagos there are penguins in the galapagos i've seen them it, it just works right and the logo the the font is really nice and readable but clean Well, oh gosh, Turkish pepper, no. Crime against humanity, right? And against God. I think this is a religious crime. On, I'm, I'm don't, I don't know. I can't explain rationally, but on a spiritual level, I can sense it, all right? <laughs> Actually, I don't hate Turkish pepper. The sweet and sour uh, Turkish pepper uh, is pretty good. And... Um, and in those videos where I tried them, eating it quickly destroys, I think, the fun of having it where you're slowly kind of sucking on this sweet, delicious, you know, hard candy. And then suddenly you kind of break into that center part where it releases some of that pepper. And it has like a salty kind of like kick to it. And you're like, oh, but it doesn't over, it's not too much all at once. And I think that's the key if you're to have Turkish pepper. And it helps that, you know, it wasn't uh, salmiaki flavored at it. Uh, but hold on, yeah, the love the ice cream kiosk. I like Google Translate, it's like, we're just gonna do this for you. We just, you, we just don't think you're ready for the finish. <laughs> oh shoot, I can't see my chat again. Um. Yeah, I, I, we thought we were going to do Duolingo, but we're still on the ice cream. All right, and I'm not apologizing. Um, vanilla ice cream with peach and mango sorbet. Ooh, that sounds good. Wait, you went to a place called Maestro Ecoti or Ecotic. I don't know. Um, and Vlad, you took a course in graphic design, and scalability was one of the important things they taught. Nice. That's cool, Vlad. That's yeah. No, graphic design is fun. Uh, I'm not like I never really formally learned it or you know used many tools, but um, I like it. I, I think it's cool, and I like watching videos where people explain it and they take a, a logo and they kind of diagnose it and they're like, "This is what I would change," and then they actually change it and you're like, ah, "That actually looks a lot better," you know. And it's like there's. It's an art, but there's also some logic and science to it, and I think that's what makes it uh, fun. You know? um, wait, welcome to the country where God hates ice cream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's all the salmiaki and ice cream. Oh, God. Thank, thank God that salmiaki is not in everything in this country. You know, that would be 
that would be tough. That would be tough for me. Um, I decided to ask about ice cream and this became the ice cream station. All right, I do anything I can to avoid actually learning Finnish on this channel. Uh, but actually, on that note, maybe we should jump back into... No, no, hold on. The whole reason I came here is I wanted to see, like, the logos. Oh my gosh. Let's, what is the no most northernmost King Vini station? Let's home in on it. Oh, look at this. Sodan Gula. I love Sodan Gula. I think it's such a cool little town. I mean, I don't know if I'd want to live there. But it's a really cool place to visit. People were nice, and the little wooden church is just like such a cool relic. Where was it? It's right here in the case. If you are in Sodan Gula, you need to go to the K supermarket right now and go to Yatelo Kioski Pohyantati. Northern Star. That's isn't that what Pohyantati means? And get yourself get yourself a Turkish pepper and tell them I sent you. No, just, <laughs> they'll know who I am. <laughs> I'm I'm calling them right now. All right. No, no. Oh well. Anyways. Um, Oh, here it is. Okay, I wanted to see all... Yeah, this is what I wanted to see, where, like, all these cool... These cool boxes. Oh, they do such a good job. And, like, I'm I'm sorry, but, like, especially with something like ice cream, color is everything. You know, creating this, this bouquet of colors. It's, it's so important. Um, ooh, that looks really good. All of this looks really good. Mango Mansika. Mansika is um, strawberry. Oh, there's so many good, like, just... Oh, no. This one, I can just tell by the black stripe. The black and gray stripe. I am not gonna like that. At least when it has licorice in it, it's pretty obvious. You know? Wow. This all looks so nice. <laughs> oh, you know what I really like? Um, those ice creams that have uh, like a little ch a chocolate coating at the very top of the like the cone. And then they have uh, little nuts and crumbles. You know what I'm talking about? What it, it's like nougat. Is that the word for it? That's like embedded into the chocolate. Oh, that's... I haven't had one of those in so long. I wonder if they, they have a they have them here. Wait, what's this? Butter vanilla? That's weird. I don't know what that means. Um, oh, this is the Kuningatar, which is the bilberry-raspberry combination. Very nice. And see, again, mintu, right? To me, mint ice cream should just, like, I the packaging can be green. I'm fine with that. But the the ice cream shouldn't have weird green streaks. In it. Hold on, I'm going to click on it. Wow, this is a lot more information than I thought I was going to find. But anyways, I don't like that it has that. Like... It should just be like, it's like chocolate ice cream, mint ice cream. Just make it mint flavored. I know mint is green because it's a plant, but the flavor isn't green. At least to me. All right, now I've had my fill. Chocolate related ranting. Unless I look at the chat and, uh, <laughs> and realize. Oh. <laughs> uh, um, Palmyaki is known in all of those like northern countries. So Finns aren't the only weirdos. That's I mean you know what you guys are in. You're in good enough company, I guess. <laughs> I just I just never really got it. 
got into it. Though I have to say, the few times that I have had salmiaki, uh, I guess recently, if you can call it recently, but you know, I'm not as uh, surprised. Like I kind of have it and I'm like, you know, this isn't the worst thing, right? I'm like, it's salmiaki, like it's fine. And um, it's it, it doesn't upset me. Uh, soup, super pinky was your childhood. <laughs> Wait, is I missed that flavor, but I guess it's somewhere in here. Maybe I scrolled past it. And hey, TB, welcome in, and JF as well. Good to have you guys. Um, Kuningatara means glorious queen. Bow down. All the other flavors are like, hi, I'm vanilla. Hi, I'm mango. Hi, I am glorious queen, the diva of all ice cream. And then La Crate is like, I'm the weird one that you guys are all going to be obsessed with. Yep, that's how it goes. Um, wasn't Pingvini Yatala from Folio before? Um, is it Nestle that owns the, the brand for it? I don't know. I wonder if it says that sometimes it'll say like down here, it'll be like, I don't know. Register statement. Roneri, Finland. Is that the, is this the company? Let's take a look at their website. Roneri. Ice Cream Academy. They employ 200 people in Finland. What? They operate on six continents. In thir they employ 13,000 people around the world. What? They sell Fotzer ice cream under a license. Very interesting. At Finland's largest ice cream factory in Turangi. Ice cream has been made to finish taste using local ingredients since 1902. Um, wait, they have a vine leaf symbol. I don't know what that means. Vine means only, and leaf means like a, a ticket, right? Or a bill? Not a, maybe not a bill, but a ticket. The only ticket symbol. Is that some kind of certification? They have a head office in Espo. I need to show up. Oh, look at this! The story of the penguin! What? I love... Look, they show the, the logo. Let's zoom in on it. Look at this. It's bad resolution, but it's okay. Oh, dude, the original logo is best. This is... This is the best logo hands down they've only been messing it up ever since i mean i was just saying this is good but now i see this i want this ice cream i definitely do not want this one the 2011 creepy 3d model logo Ugh. Eh. this one eh I don't know, something about the banner. And maybe it's the resolution. Maybe because it's if it was scaled properly, I might not dislike it so much. But OMG, this one is so good. Let's follow the... We, look, I'm sorry. We have to follow. We have to go on a trip. And, and follow the penguin trail. Okay, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm getting caught up and not paying attention. <laughs> Oh, butter was a mistranslation by Google. It did not say butter in the finish. That butter vanilla or whatever. Okay. That's good. Um, mint buffet is your favorite. Tea. Mint buffet. What, is a bu what's a, what does the buffet mean? Is it different from just regular mint ice cream? Do you only get this ice cream at a buffet of some kind? No, I, I assume it's part of the flavor, right? Um, and Nestle owns Froneri, the company that makes pink. Thanks, Tomi uh, Tomino. Thank you. Um, yeah, the Google Translate does some weird stuff. 
Folio sold many years ago. Av Avinely. Oh, okay. It's it's because I have Google Translate. I had turned it off. Oh, but then I I have this. Uh, I don't know if you, yeah, you guys can see it. Always translate finish. Yeah, okay. So that's why I'm like, finally. Avine means key. But let's keep it in English just so I, you know, I can actually read it more. Or, or read it at all. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I should be doing it in Finnish. And then let's do that. Maybe we'll click on Lahde Matgale, which means like, I guess to go on a trip or take to take a trip. I don't know, be sent on a trip. Uh, the key flag. Oh, wait, lipo means flag. Oh, yeah, that's right. And it's a certification that the product is made in Finland. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. Yeah. Oh, buffet is a sandwich ice cream. I do like ice cream sandwiches. Growing up, that was one of my favorite things. I love having the, like I said, like those digestives or having that something that's got kind of like a, I don't know, it's it's a cookie, right? Having cookies in your ice cream, the best. So good. Uh, but lipu also means ticket. Okay. Um... Oh, well, even if I translate it, it's, it's the, this is an image. <laughs> so, uh, um, okay, hold on a second. First of all, I'm going to criticize this because that we just rant. All right. If this is the title right here, why does the journey not begin with this? Right? Immediately, I am disoriented that this is the penguin's journey. And then there's an arrow that makes it point back. And I'm like, wait, where do I, do I start up here? Or do I start here, I guess? Or is it here? Or is it, wait, how, but what? Oh no, it's, oh, it's not an arrow. It's a penguin's foot. I did not see that. This is, this is the foot of a penguin. So you start here. And then you start walking this way. I, I don't know. I just it was not intuitive to me. You, I'm just providing a little user feedback. All right. To whoever is the web designer for Ping Vini. They probably do not care. <laughs> They're probably not paid enough uh, to care. But, you know, here we go. Um, the ice cream, just literally O-Y, Yatala, the, the ice cream company, uh, Glas Abe. It's always a Swedish company originally. Aloita, Yatalen, Valmistuksen, Ja Ota, Kaupten, Pingvini, Ahmon. Well, I understood some of this. Aloita means like begins. Ice creams, Valmistuksen. Uh, Valmis means like complete or ready, right? And Ota to take. Oh, I forget what some of this is. The the penguin, I, they're taking penguin image, maybe, as like the brand, you know, right? Because that's what we see here. That's a cool penguin. I like the big feet on this penguin. You know, like it's fancy. It's wearing, it's wearing proper shoes. Um, follow me, Sta, is to make. Ah, oh, okay. So they begin ice cream production, right? Valmi Stupsen. And uh, then, and hey, scrambled egg, welcome in. Yeah, Valmi Stus is manufacturing or making, literally, yeah. If a company has both Finnish and Swedish, it means that the company is officially bilingual and the order of them tells which one is the main language. Really? O, Y, and A, B means the same thing. Yeah, they're, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, so, yeah, it's the same name, I guess. 
glass or gloss. I don't know how to pronounce Swedish. I haven't done, started my Duolingo Swedish yet, but that means ice cream, right? Um, okay, and then, so, the zoom. Oh, I can't zoom in on it. it. Won't let me go. Well, we can at least, we can at least get this much. Um, then, I'm trying to see here what this is. This is like a little Volio booth. That's really nice. I feel like if someone recreated this, you know, like, it looks so custom. Like, they would do so well. And to wear the little hat, you know, that they're, you know, it, it's so unique. Oh, wait, where is this? This reminds me of, um, what is it? Um, almost the Rex. Right? Eorex. Is that where this is? In Helsinki? I don't actually... Maybe it's not that. I don't know. What is this? It says Volio up here. I feel like I, I've seen that before. Like, is it Lossi Palazzi? That's what this reminds me of, if you guys know Helsinki. Um, OY is the abbreviation for Osa Geuthia. And, or the AB is Octia Bolag <laughs> in Swedish. LLC or LTD might be that, yeah, would be in English. Ah, okay. It is Lassi Palazzi. It's the same building. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. So they started right here in Lassi Palazzi? Why is it called Glass Palace, by the way? Right? Is, is that the translation of Lassi Palazzi, Glass Palace? I mean, there's glass windows, but it's not a palace. Nor is the glass that prominent a feature of it. It's just like they, it's a building with windows. There's nothing palatial or especially glass-like about it. Unless it was the first building in Finland that was like had special glass windows. Um, who knows? It had lots of glass for its time. <laughs> it is a very cool building, and I have a, a, a fond memory. I have several fond memories here, because when I first came to Finland in 2015, that they, the Helsinki Film Festival, every year in, they have a bunch of films there, and, and throughout some other theaters in, uh, in Helsinki. And that was a lot of fun to see a bunch of those movies. And that year, I think it was 2015, it might have been 2016, but I'm pretty sure it was 2015, which is the year in ba the movie Back to the Future, uh, right? That, that, that is the future date that Marty McFly gets sent to. You know, and there's the hover skateboards and everything, right? And, um, and on that date, it was like October something, October 12th or October 21st, I don't know what it was, 2015 that the theater there hosted a Back to the Future marathon. And we watched all three Back to the Futures back to back. And I remember that in between screenings, we would all have to leave the theater and then go back around to show our tickets again. Cause you could just go for one, you could purchase a ticket for just one. And, and then we would come around the block and someone had brought the, uh, their DeLorean, right? The, you know, the car that is the, the, the car that gets all whatever, that enables time travel, that has the flux capacitor installed in it. Someone brought their DeLorean and parked it in front of the theater. Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously they were fans of the movie. Right? Maybe that's why they got the DeLorean. But it was pretty cool to see it. You don't see DeLoreans often, you know? So it was kind of cool. Just like, oh, hey, someone has a DeLorean. That's a per They've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> that was, that's when they peaked. Right, that was their apotheosis. But yeah, it was built in the 1930s. At the time, it had a lot of glass. It is also meant to be a temporary. Really? Oh, before Lassi Palazzi, there was the Toroku Barracks, which was blown up during the Civil War. Wow. I did not know that, but I love learning that kind of stuff. And one of the, and I've already, you, you guys probably know this, the, the Instagram, account called Helsinki Facades 
um, run by a really nice guy named Christo. Uh, he uh, he does the best research on buildings here in Helsinki and even finds like archives of the footage and even like architectural details and stuff that uh, tells more of the story about, you know, what was there before the building. Um, I think that's really cool. And that's also important. And actually, if you want a good tip and you want to learn a lot about Finland uh, in just one room, if you go to the Architectural Museum, or it's just the Museum of Finnish Architecture, it's right behind the, the uh, Design Museum um, uh, at the top floor. It, it goes decade by decade. And it explains like, oh, what was the architecture? But it talks also about the society, the economy, like, and it, it takes all these different aspects of life and and in, in the history and the politics and connects it to the architecture and how so much of the architecture of that decade, you know, was defined by the econ economic situation that Finland was in or like the changes in technology and the changes in people's uh, lifestyle, more people moving to the cities and the need for cheap residential buildings uh, to be built quickly, uh, but also to have certain modern, you know, amenities or efficiencies and whatever. So it's like you get such a, a great history of Finland that's so visual. And uh, it's, I think it starts, yeah, it starts like 1900 and it tells the, the story, you know, so it's not the full story of Finland, but it's like the, whatever the 21st uh, cent or 20th century and um, yeah so if you want a recommendation I'd say go there because pretty soon they're moving the design museum and the architecture museum both to another location in Helsinki I think in Yatkasari if I remember correctly it's like a new devel newly developed area um, they're building a new museum there I don't know maybe it's not it's, I'm sure when they announce these things it'll be like 15 years from now that they'll actually make the move but they already had signs up saying that they were moving little tip if you're interested in that kind of stuff that's my my favorite museum room in finland maybe at least in terms of information um there's also been a tv studio the lossy palazzi a really sub tv and yeah now they have the almost rex uh like museum down below which is I don't know if it's a museum. I think you could call it a museum, but it's like, it's cool. It's got art and architecture, a lot more contemporary stuff. Um, the two-story building behind the Lassi Palazzi is the only part of the barracks that survived, but the main building was of the huh. It is a weird building. It is a weird building. That maybe helps explain why it, why it's so weird because it's been modified, you know, so much. Anyways, I don't know if we're going to read all this, but so in 1962, Turengin Yatelotehdas So uh, this was the city, right? Turengi, right? So this city's ice cream tehdas. Isn't that like, does that mean like the ice cream factory? Tehda. Doesn't that mean to do or to make, right? So it's like the ice cream factory, call me stui, um, was completed or is completed. I don't know if it's passive tense. It seems like it's more active tense, but it's uh, it's past tense. I guess active voice. I don't even know all of the grammatical terminology correctly. But yeah, 1968 Eskimo, Eskimo puikot. Nukumurasan Markin I actually don't even know what that means. But that's okay. <laughs> something about the es Eskimo um, something. And then uh, 1984, we got the Ufet Yatala Duntui. Oh my gosh, yeah, as a kid, I grew up on these. We had these, these ice cream sandwiches. Uh, they, these were the best. I loved them. Within peak. What? Tapu Suomen. So, premium ice cream. <laughs> hey, look at that. It's in English. 1984, this other brand, I guess? Tapu. I forgot what that means. I don't think I've learned what that means. So, something 
uh, to Finland, right? Um, so yeah, okay, it does mean Turenki. Yeah, okay, it means, and then it, the factory, Ehdas. Good. So I, I am getting it. And then what is this? Nuku Murosa, in current form. So the Eskimo, I don't know what Puik, Puikko means. Puik, Puikko. Something, something in current form. Does this mean to the market? Markino, so it's to something. Markino. I don't know what Markino means. But anyways. Um, but yeah, what is Sapu? You know, I mean, I have translate up here. I should just do it. Uh, Sapu. Arrives! It arrives in Finland. Well, that's good. So it kind of indicates that the way the story is being told is kind of in this. Uh, we in English we call it, or we were taught to call it, the historical present, where you talk about things that happened in the past as if they're happening now. Where you're like, and then King George decrees that this happens, and then this, you know, and then the Declaration of Independence is signed, you know, and then the war, the Civil War happened. Right, and so you're saying it like as in the present tense, but it's a historical, histor the historical present. Anyway, so Sapu, um, and that's probably why like Valmistui means like is completed or it completes. Um, but yeah, Sundu, I should look that up. What is that? Is born! Suntumapaiva! I knew, I was like, that seems familiar. It is born. The Pufet. Does that have a meaning in Finnish? Pufet? <laughs> I'm gonna look. Puff. Puffs. Puffs? Is it Danish though? I don't know. Puikko means popsicle. Ah, oh, the Eskimo popsicles. Um, so, <laughs> what, wait, what was this? In the current form. Marki noyole. I'm going to look that up. To the market. I did not realize that that could be Actually, the best way to do this is then come to Wiktionary, search, and then Markina, right? Or it could be Markinat. Oh, it's from Markinat. Usually in the plural for market. Oh, so you wouldn't really say Markina as in the singular you would okay borrowed from swedish mark nod it's a fun fair welcome to the fun fair um hold on let's go back here um yeah it's in the so Yeah, <laughs> 27, you have to get a a popsicle now. <laughs> it's a good day for it. At least here in Helsinki. It's not it's it's it is hot. Alright. It is hot. Um Uusi tunnos paljoyatele liike toiminal toimin. I can never do this when there's this many double like here's a double I and then there's double N and a double L, I can't do it. Just the the Finnish language asks for too much. It's too greedy. It's too greedy for a vowel and consonant space with respect to the uh, available real estate that can be provided by my brain. So the new um, why don't 
Uh, is that the logo? Logo. That's into what does that come from? What is the does that have another like Tumnus? It's from Tundma. <laughs> the attribute characteristic quality sign or logo. Um oh wait, no, that's a oh I was reading the Esto Estonian, sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's the Finnish. The Finnish. Tuntea. I was wondering, I was like, Tundma. That reminded me for some re reason of uh, Tumba. Do you guys ever play... Uh, was it Tumba or Tomba? Tomba. Uh, I, I have distinct memories of that. Hold on, sorry. I gotta show you guys. Uh, how did we say it as a kid? I feel like we said Tumba. Tomba. Oh, I don't remember, but oh man, I remember. I remember playing this. But we didn't own it. We we got it from Blockbuster, so I had to play it as much as I could in like one weekend before we returned it. Um, hold on. Sorry, I'm not. I gotta see. Oh, hold on. We gotta go back to the important stuff. Wait, is the Tomba in? Um, do they have like wait? The language is it in Suomi? It's not in Suomi, and I'm disappointed. Oh, <laughs> someone translate this. This needs to be in Finnish, so I can then pretend to translate it. Um, but just use Google the whole time and Wiktionary. Oh, the whole reason I was here was I was looking at Tuntea, right? So like a logo, Tunnos can also just mean like a motto or a username. So it's not like in English, a logo is like a visual thing. It can have writing in it, but it's like, it's your visual mark. Um, it, a motto is not a logo. That's a, a motto is just a saying. And if you put your motto in your logo, um, I don't know, actually, I was gonna say that's probably a bad idea, but now that I think about it, a lot of classical logos include the motto, especially in Latin for like universities, right? Like Harvard, Harvard University has like whatever the Latin motto. I don't remember what it is, but it, whatever. Untea, what is this? Um, to feel. To know, to be familiar with, to recognize, to sense the identity of. Unseen sinut, I recognized you. At the anesta, right away, by your voice. Anyways, okay. So actually, usage notes. This Okay, while we're here and we're learning Finnish, the English verb to know can be translated into Finnish with either tietä or tuntea. The difference is that tietä usually expresses superficial knowledge about something. Like knowledge that the thing in question exists, where Tuntea expresses more personal, subjective, detailed, or deeper knowledge. I mean, in English, we say that as well. I'm sure we, I mean, we must have a lot of different ways of saying it. But instead of saying, I know, we can also say, I feel. I feel like it's this or that. You know, it's like, you know it, but it's... Yeah. Tiedän hänet, mutta en tunne häntä. I know her, but I don't know her. We also have a great way of doing this in English. That's called reduplication. And you would say it like this. I know her, but I don't know know her. Right? You say the ver whatever the word is, you just say it twice. And, we, and as kids, we did this a lot. I don't want to say a lot, but... The most common way we would do this as kids is when you would say if you like someone or not. You know, I like her, but I don't like like her. <laughs> like, you know, I don't dislike her, but I'm not in love with. I don't have a crush on her. I don't like. I don't like like her. Anyways, there you go. A little English lesson. Do you guys do that? 
that reduplication, linguistic phenomenon. Also a really funny word because duplication already means that something is being produced twice. So if you reduplicate it, does that mean it would be then four times? It's like when someone says repeat three times. How many times do you say it in total? Do you say it three times or do you say it four times? In my book, that it's four times because the first time you say it doesn't count as a repeat, right? Repeat one time means you would say it twice. That's all I'm saying, all right? These are the things that keep me up at night. And, and then I save it for ranting. A morphological process in which the root or stem of a word or even the whole word is repeated exactly or with a slight change. Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, well, you know what? This is, you know this was written by linguists because look at this. This is one of the longest. Oh, they have it in all these other languages. So yeah, in English. Oh my God. <laughs> Contrastive focus reduplication. Exact reduplication can be used with contrastive focus, generally where the first noun is stressed to indicate a literal as opposed to figurative example of a noun, or perhaps a sort of platonic ideal of the noun, as in, is that carrot cheese cheesecake or carrot cake cake? <laughs> this is similar to the f no, get out of here. What? There's a Finnish use. Furthermore, it is used to contrast real or pure things against imitations or less pure form. Do you want soy milk? No, I want milk milk. I would, which I would never say. <laughs> and oh, and then uh, she starts getting the cow's milk out and you're like, no, I want, it's oat milk. Obviously milk milk is oat milk. That's the, that's the milk. Um, but hold on, hold on. I'm going to look at chat here in a second. Sorry. Reduplication can be used to refer to the most prototypical instance of a word's meaning. In such a case, it is called contrastive focus reduplication. Finnish colloquial speech uses the process. Nouns can be reduplicated to indicate ingenuity, completeness, originality, and being uncomplicated, as opposed to being fake, incomplete, complicated, or fussy. It can be thought as compound word, compound word formation. For example, the, oh my good, no, shut up. We were, how, what are the chances that we would go from ice cream to reduplication back full circle to ice cream? Are we having a moment right now? Because literally the word for ice cream is right here as, an, as the example sentence. Oh my. Okay, let's see if we can translate this without looking at the English yet. Soin, yatala. So I'm eating ice cream. Yakarkia and candy. Seka. Oh, I forgot what seka means. Does that mean both? I feel like that means both. But I don't know. Um, dietusti. Or maybe it means and also? Or but not? Because the, the ka sometimes means not? Like enka. Oh no, but en, the end part of enka means not. The ka is just probably just means and also. I'm just gonna go with I'm I am eating ice cream and candy and also the uh What does that mean? Why do I feel like that that's like an adjective or adverb in this case, like and I mean complete in some way? I don't know. And then uh ruoka <laughs> ruoka That's the reduplication. Ruoka means food. Right and food, food. Right, as if as if ice cream and candy aren't real food. 
Well, let's read the English translation that was here. I didn't look at it, by the way. I ate ice cream and candy and, of course, thiathusti. That means, of course. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, food food. <laughs> here, food food is contrasted to junk food. One may say, en ol eilen koulussa. Um, like, I... En ol... I, I have not, uh, or I was not, I was, I was not at school, uh, yesterday, Elen, Bolusa, Oska, Olin, Kipea, because I was, oh, I don't know what that word means, Kipea, maybe I've learned that, but I can't think of it right now, Cis, Kipea, Kipea. They, like, so... Keep it, keep it. I wasn't at school yesterday because I was sick. Sick, sick, that is. <laughs> like, like, just in case you're wondering, I was actually sick. That means that one was actually suffering from an Ill illness instead of making up excuses as usual. Ah, ruoka ruoka is proper food. Peli peli, a complete game, as opposed to a mod. So even in the gaming community, you guys would say this. Puhelin, puhelin. A phone for talking, as opposed to a pocket computer? I don't know if I understand this one. I don't understand this one. This one, I think, is going... Is this going back to, like, when people had... But it wouldn't make sense to talk about a pocket computer before smartphone. Or or maybe mobile phones in general. I don't know. Um Kalwas Kalwas Kalwas. Unquestionably far away. I mean in English we do that far, far away. A long time ago in a galaxy far far away isn't isn't that how it isn't that how star wars begins far far away not just far away and then koti koti that means the home home meaning your your parents home as opposed to where you happen to live that's really interesting okay sorry chat i'm coming back to you guys because i feel like you guys are are we're already on to this um you know okay vlad you're right yeah i know every every time can i just like complaining about finnish pronunciation occasionally when it gives me problems all right i know english has it, it has its own uh, <laughs> or a bag of worms all right so uh we will just leave it at that e pluribus unum that's true that's right that's on the um that's like the United States. It's on the dollar bill. Um, like in one, or um, it's like out of many, one. That's I think that's the clo a, a good enough translation. I I did study Latin, so but <laughs> a long time ago. Tunatko tulerin, tiedan ukahanon. Uh, do you know Tyler? Uh, or I know who he is. Ah, like do you do you know no Tyler? Well, I know him, but I don't know no. Um Oh and JF, you were saying reduplication isn't a thing, but now after I pulled up all these examples, you're you're like, nope, actually maybe it is. And TB Theatrusty means of course. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, oh, but JF, these examples do sound a bit odd to you, so maybe it isn't so clear cut. Um, and 27, hold on, you put a picture on the Discord. By the way, anyone who's watching, you can join my Discord if you look in a description of the video. There should be a link. If the link doesn't work, let me know in the chat because I, I, I it should still work, but I'm, I'm skeptical. I feel like Discord keeps uh, changing it. Um, oh, nice. You got the Maestro Exotic 
popsicle. Vanilla ice cream coated with mango and peach. Hey, gosh. I gotta try that. That looks really good. Very cool. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> I love that I that this this live stream influenced someone for the better. All right. If I can bring uh, I, I turn into like my like evangelical preacher mode. If I can bring one thing, one lesson for you to take home today, it's that you need to have an ice cream, all right? And you will feel better. <laughs> oh man, maybe I should be an uh, ice cream salesman. You just work in a little ice cream shop. Um, oh yeah, so these, TB, you think these sound really weird as examples. The, this type of reduplication in English, it's it's very common, but I guess it's not so common in Finland. Pocket computer is a smartphone, comma an actual phone. Is puhelin puhelin? Yeah, okay, maybe that's it, Lorelai. Yeah, um, I was trying to think that that could be it. I was just a little confused. A, bit, a better. Ex description than what's provided here would just be like an a, a traditional phone right like just a traditional a landline phone as opposed to a smartphone pocket computer confused me because that implies to me that it's not a phone that it's some other device you have in your pocket that resembles a phone but then i, I don't know i was overthinking it um Uleri. Is, it, is that a, is that a, my, my 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 feminine name? And exactly. Uh, what would be the? Is there like a masculine form of tuleri? Puhelin puhelin isn't used that much these days. Yeah, I don't. Not many people, especially in Finland. In the U.S., we still have like landlines. People still write checks, and you know it's weird. Uh, actually, I feel like it only just started in the U.S. where you can use, like, mobile pay and, um, and like, the, the credit cards now actually have the electronic, you know, thing. But also in the U.S., oh, my gosh. The, so many people in the U.S. are paranoid. And you can't do anything in the U.S. without it being connected to some co grander conspiracy theory. You know, like it's it's just out of control at this point that like, oh, people were afraid that RFID would, you know, oh my gosh, you know, so you gotta, can't, I don't know, people are skeptical, but I don't know. Uh, Cal, oh wait, hold on, sorry, I, I was reading the, um, the chat. Um, you're definitely guilty of saying culty culty, yeah. <laughs> home, home. See, that wouldn't make sense in English to say home, home for your parents. You would just say you're going to your parents' place, you know, or you're visiting your parents. Um, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't. I'm trying to think of a context where you would say home, home in English. But it would be much more obvious of like two different places. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So, JF, you kind of think that none of these are used or have ever been used. And actually, that is a very good criticism of a lot of linguistic work. <laughs> oftentimes, I, like, I, linguists like writing about language so much that, like, they... I guess, it, I mean, in some sense, like, language is so observable right like there's it's so important to actually collect data about what people are actually saying versus what you want people to be saying right and what you want your language to fit and part of the reason grammar sucks and is so hard to learn is because a lot of the the model for which grammar was built is based on latin and greek right and then we're 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 taking that same model and assuming or trying to force fit other languages. I don't know. Maybe this is just a hot take. 
I don't really have a grand theory or much evidence to fully support this, but you know, I feel like uh, it's often the case that like, you know, you'll hear about all of these rules and then you'll read sentences in language. Who would, who says that? But then again, I've also learned a little humility, at least when I'm, when I'm with English. Because whereas at least with like Finnish, pretty much everyone that speaks Finnish kind of all lives in Finland, right? And there, there aren't that many people. And generally you can understand like where someone's from in Finland. But like in English, it's such a, it's a mess. Like there's so many native speakers everywhere, you know, and, and the language is in like, and yeah, so it's like, what, whose version of English counts? Uh, there, and there's so many in-between versions. It's really hard to, to, to pin it down. Um, but anyway, sorry, we're <laughs> getting sidetracked here. You, so J Vlad, you've come across brew duplication, but very rarely. Um, and TB, only redu reduplication used in your house is yo-yo. When you ask uh, your kids to do something. Yo-yo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, well, what do you think, TB? Does that mean that when your kids are saying that, are they saying yo-yo in a way that means like, they're truly going to do it? Um, or does it have maybe the opposite meaning of what we're reading about, how the reduplication is more about the truer state um, versus, you know, saying it just... Um, because I, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah, yo-yo means definitely not going to happen. <laughs> that's what I was, that's what I suspected, JTV. But I don't know. Maybe your kids were just like really well behaved, you know. I don't know. <laughs> or maybe your requests were just very easy. Who knows? But uh, yeah, that's not usually the case uh, with kids. Um, so yeah, that's funny. Um, but actually, I'm I'm still curious about this. I do want to go back to the ice cream story. I mean, I know we were going to do forced finish, but honestly, this whole ice cream. A tangent has been so fun for me. I, I hope you guys don't mind that I'm just uh, going, you know, entertaining myself. Um, words can be reduplicated with their case morphemes, as in a loma la loma, away on vacation, on leave, where the adhesive morpheme LLA appears twice. While reduplication is intelligible to most Finns, its usage, its usage is confined mostly to subgroups of young women and children, and possibly fathers, E.B., of young children when they talk to their children. <laughs> Citation needed. <laughs> See, this is literally the problem, right? Like, like making kind of grand statements about how people talk or whatever. Uh, but, you know, I mean, at some level, you just got to take people at their word. And however, most young women and children do not use reduplication. Reduplication has a somewhat childish connotation and may be perceived as annoying. <laughs> shut up. Shut up. Koti, Koti. Shut, shut up. What are you saying? <laughs> Oh, I love how much of this explanation for function and meaning was dedicated uh, to finish, right? And I mean, I still can't get over that ice cream showed up in one of the examples. I mean, literally the first example is about finish. Um, but anyways, well, that's good. It, it certainly seems to have a more limited use uh, compared to English. I, I used it a lot, and I probably still use it quite a bit. Um, but hold on, we gotta go back. We gotta go back to the penguin journey. <laughs> where, where were we? Oh my gosh! Hold on. The reason we got onto this was Tuntea, and I was that's why Tunus logo Tuntea to know. Oh my gosh, that's how we went down that rabbit hole, and we were here the new logo. Volio ice cream, Volio Yadaba, 
Liiketoimin criminal. Oh my, I never really remember what Liiketoimin. Let me, um, I hear this word all the time. Why can't movement? Business transaction or business is this one. Oh, it's two with two ends or business. Okay. Go back to this tab. Um, oh man. And then over here, 1993, the classic brand is born. Dun, dun. And we're still learning Finnish. Thank you, Lorelei. Just ice cream theme. Exactly. And wait, 27, are you uh, auctioning off your clone? Um, I, that wouldn't be wise, considering that like he's basically your personal butler. <laughs> like, I, uh, I don't know. I don't think you should... Uh give up on that actually uh 27 what do you think about the movie the prestige um i just rewatched it recently and i forgot that it's a christopher nolan film oh my gosh it is such a good movie have you seen it i don't want to i feel like it's a movie that could be easily spoiled but i don't want to say anything more but it's a it's a really good movie Though there were parts when I was like, if you really think about it and you sit down and you're like, wait a second. Well, if that was, because it's a movie that has a twist at the end, right? That gets revealed and you're like, whoa. You know, like most Christopher Nolan movies were like, whoa. Yeah, but then you kind of think about it and you're like, well, I don't know. It doesn't really make sense that that would have happened if that was true. And you kind of, it's easy to, I, for me at least, I can kind of nitpick the story a little. I don't know. It doesn't really make sense that the character would have actually said this or that at that time if that thing had been true. So it was just misdirection for the sake of misdirection and not so much like the, a really believable moment for the characters. I don't know. But yeah, I really I really like the movie still, even though I'm criticizing it. I think it's a fun movie. It's about magicians. I love, I just love the setting and that the, it's about two magicians who are competing to be... The, like the best right and the prestige refers to the final reveal of a magic trick um there's like three parts of a magic trick the prestige being like the most important part where you really baffle people's minds um at the end in that moment um and people yeah are kind of wondering how wait how did you do that not just that you make something disappear but that, that then you bring it back in an unexpected way that's what the prestige is, bringing back uh, something that you may disappear. And uh, the movie plays upon this theme so beautifully with the characters and uh, their, their kind of their obsession with each other as competing magicians to, to try and figure out each other's tricks or to like outperform each other and to be the best. Um, and it gets really weird and kind of messed up, you know, uh, and I, I enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, I should have known it was a Christopher Nolan film going in, like rewatching it because it has all the, it's Christian Bale and, uh, Michael Caine <laughs> in it. Like, yeah, that was probably a dead giveaway there. Batman and his butler. Um, sorry. Anyways, going back to it. Um, <laughs> Oh, TB, you don't accept the clone, the offer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 27, you can't give him away. You're his pers personal chef, and he's your personal butler. Well, that's, you know, I guess that's a good trade. 20, you haven't seen it. I'm trying to think of how to recommend it to you. I don't want to say anything more if you're interested in watching it. What I will say is as a movie, it starts so fast. Like you're immediately thrown into the story. And it, it like, and I love that kind of story where it's like, it doesn't feel like it wastes your time at all. It's like, whoa, things are just happening. And it's like hard to kind of almost keep up with what's happening until the end 
when something really special is revealed and then and then the movie in that kind of christopher nolan way of like messing with time every christopher nolan film is like obsessed with time and chronology and so then at the end when when this special detail is revealed uh, in like a really clever or beautiful way then it kind of reflects back and it shows it actually shows some of the previous scene but from a different angle and having the knowledge of that final reveal is like oh actually that makes it more interesting um but i'm not going to say anything more than that but i think you should watch it that's all um watch it watch it with your clone <laughs> Tyler, do I eat uh, normal ice cream or only the ones without meat? Are you asking if I eat ice cream ice cream or ice cream ice cream? <laughs> Actually, I just reduplicated both of them. So I messed up. I messed up the joke there, but I have... Well, no, I don't consume milk. So I don't... I'm not like cow's milk, that is. I consume milk milk, the oat kind. Um... But actually, I don't know, with ice cream, it doesn't have to be oat milk and ice cream. Just as long as it's not cow's milk, then I'll, I'll have it. Vlad, which movie are we talking about? The Prestige. Here, I'll even type it into the chat so I can it. I mean, it's a, it's a it's pretty... Well, I haven't checked the reviews, but I think it's a really well-reviewed movie and yeah i'm sure it's on some streaming services the prestige it's worth it um where where were we <laughs> so in 1993 the classic brand is born 1995 all you got the la what is, I just don't know, what does tu testa mean? Hold on, wait, I'm clicking on the wrong thing. About tutus. Tu is hopper? That can't be it. I must have misspelt it. Tu testa. That's, I mean, but Google Translate is not reliable. So we go to Wiktionary. All right, we go to Wiktionary. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, Kuti. Borrowed from Swedish. Hone. Ah, that's what a hopper basically is, right? It's uh, like a funnel. But a hopper in English refers like specifically to like farming equipment. A hopper. Or, or a paintball gun. I remember this. My cousin was really into uh, paintball. And he, man, he was into like competitive paintball stuff. And I remember he would show us his paintball guns. He was like, I don't know, may maybe 10 years older, you know? So of course he had all these, this cool stuff that we weren't allowed to have yet. You know, like video games that were like rated M. We, could, we couldn't play those, but he'd be like, yeah, I already beat it. I beat all the Grand Theft Autos. And we're like, oh, man, so cool. And he would show us his paintball gun, right? And it would have, like, where the, the, the hopper, right? Where you put all the paintballs in there. And, uh, yeah, he even showed us a bunch of videos of, like, paintball battles he had been in. It was really cool. Um, but, yeah. Um, Uti was on the picture. It's a cone. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The cone ice cream. Yatala Tutti is the factory made version of Yatala Tutta. Wait, what does Tutta mean? Lorelei. Versus the type you buy from a kiosk. So Tutti. I'm gonna I'm gonna look up here. Tutta. A cone-shaped object. So there's different there's different kinds of ice cream cones. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. Like I, when you buy it from a, a kiosk, the cone is made separately and then it's prepared right in front of you, as opposed to the 
ice cream cone that you buy in the a frozen section of a grocery store where it's like factory made and you wrap it. I didn't know that they would be different things. From the synonymous but now rare the, the, which is of sound symbolic origin. It could have originally referred to a horn made of birch thus the onomatopoeic but a good word and then later extended by analogy like a horn okay that's interesting by the way i uh, was reading recently about trees you know as i do and there's some really interesting things about birch birch just like silver birch is considered a pioneer tree species because it likes to colonize new areas uh, and to grow up outside of a forest where it, where it can grow quickly. And compared to other trees, it lives a short life, right? It, it grows quickly, but it's not designed for long living. Um, and uh, trees that grow in the forest, like oak, Right, that or that are more forest-like, I guess. Um, they don't need to have. How do I say? It? They can. They can employ all sorts of defense mechanisms that make use of the forest um, collective defenses. Right. So, if one tree gets sick, that tree can send out signals, either through the air or through the roots, that notify other trees that it is sick. Maybe a, a beetle has attacked it or a fungus has attacked it. And then all the nearby trees, they're like, oh crap, um, we need to protect ourselves. And so then they, em they employ their resources to start creating more toxins because a, a lot of trees produce all of these toxins uh, to protect their wood from being consumed by all the animals and fungi and whatnot that would want to eat it. And this is also why wood is such a great material for us when we're like building, um, because it doesn't it doesn't decay easily. And part of that is just because there are so many kind of natural toxins in it to prevent its decomposition. Um, however, birch, which are frontier species and that grow very quickly without forest community surrounding it, they evolved to employ a, a different strategy where they just pump their bark full of betulin, which is a toxin that gives the bark its distinctive white color. And this white color is very useful, partly because when you're a frontier tree and you're not on the, um, you're not within a dark forest, uh, your trunk can, is exposed to the sun. And it's important that the trunk doesn't overheat or get sunburned. And so having a white trunk reflects more of the light away. Um, and so it's very useful in that sense. But also it's useful because um, it needs to protect itself from all of the other whatever things that would want to attack it because it's growing so quickly. And this is another thing I learned about trees. When trees grow too quickly or just grow quickly in general, they produce wood are, they produce their cells much larger, and those larger cells contain more air, which is a more ideal environment for fungus to take root. So a tree that grows quickly in its youth is actually less suited for lo a long-term life than those trees that grow in the shade of their parents. Which makes sense, but is also kind of crazy that that's actually true, that trees that grow in the shade of a, like of their parents are forced essentially through light deprivation to grow slow. But the trees don't die because this is crazy. The parent trees supply the saplings underneath them with sugars. Whether this is something the parent trees like do intentionally, if we, and we can use intention here, or if it's something that fungus the fungal networks that connect all the roots, if that's a function that they perform. Um, and I don't know, I don't really know, but I do know that like the, the saplings that grow beneath their parents grow slow and dense and, and they have, I guess they're more conditioned in a way that makes them less susceptible to disease and whatnot in the future. Um, 
Whereas Birch, they didn't have that luxury because they employ a totally different strategy, right, for their survival. So it's okay if a birch tree only lives a few decades or a, a, a hundred years or so, because once it's grown to maturity and reproduced to colonize a new area, um, then it's performed its sort of function within its need. A similar now this is also crazy. A similar type of tree to the birch that is also a type of frontier species is the aspen. And the aspen employs a slightly different strategy. Instead of focusing, because obviously, and part of the reason this is called a strategy is because like if you're producing these toxins, that takes effort, right? That takes whatever like uh, your stores, right? So you know, in some sense, if you're overprotective or over overly defensive, then you're using up too much of your resources. So that then, if the next year you aren't capable, you don't get enough water or sunlight, you'll be in a worse position and the tree might die. Um, whereas Aspen, on the other hand, what they do is uh, they just produce a bunch of shoots from the, from, um, they, they grow their roots ver like horizontally and they keep sending up shoots so that if one shoot gets eaten by some herbivore or trampled or infected or something, it can just kill off that, that sapling and just shoot up another one so it, it uses kind of the was it the law of numbers it just increases its chance of success by just sending up more shoots and actually i think it's like the largest organism we know of is an aspen grove in utah uh, that is all considered all one organism it's all one group of roots one tree um, that has just been very successful in its area isn't that isn't that nuts about trees Man, there's so many, there's so many cool things I've learned about trees lately that has just blown my mind. Um, there was something else I was thinking of that was quite interesting, but I can't I can't remember what it was. It came to me when I was talking about aspen and birch. Oh, and it was something about defensive compounds and how that takes effort. Oh, this is another th crazy thing. Even okay, this is really weird. I didn't know, but now that it's explained, I'm like, I guess that kind of makes sense. So, okay, in evolution, right, the quicker that you can reproduce, the more possibilities there are for genetic mutations, which
Dang. Hello. Oh my god. I can't. I can't. I can't with technology. Oh. This is gonna be a hard one to recover from. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hold on, I have to open a window. I am. I mean, I'm not really sorry because it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault that this happened. I and this is one of these things that I don't even know how to fix because it happens so rarely that suddenly my microphone will just disconnect. And I and the only way to fix it is to unplug it and plug it back in. And I don't even know what's going on to cause that. But at least you guys had some cool music playing in the background for a little bit. Are any of you lip readers? Because you really could have gotten a lot of cool information. You know? How, like, I don't understand when it happens or why, because sometimes I'll stream for like six hours and the, the microphone is fine. And then I'm doing this and I'm just ignoring you guys. I mean, but to be fair, I was on a roll. And if I read chat, I'll I'll lose my train of thought and then I won't be able to finish what I'm saying. And I don't I don't know. I feel like that kind of discontinuity is more annoying, you know, than just not keeping up with chat 100 percent. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you for adding me. I am. OK, hold on. Let me look at this. If I only streamed in Twitch and had some sound alerts you could use in situations like this. That's a good, that's a good point. I wonder if I could enable some kind of alert. Your clone was there listening to a muted lecture on trees. <laughs> well, I know. Well, I do check the chat, but I was, I saw that you guys were posting in the chat, but I just figured you were mentioning about stuff and that I was talking about. And I was like, I'm going to get to it. I just let me finish my thought. But I went on a rant. I don't even know how far back. What was the last thing you heard? Was it really 15 minutes? It probably was. Oh my gosh. I'm I, I'm not sorry. I'm just embarrassed. And I'm mad. I, I, I'm not really mad. I'm just sort of disappointed more that the amount of time I've put into trying to figure out streaming technology and the number of ways it can go wrong. It's just like, oh, it's it's so I don't know. It, it's so what's the word? Unforgiving or like so brutal, because once a mistake happens, it's visible, right? It's not like, oh, if I was out recording a video and the, the the audio wasn't good, well, I would just choose not to use that clip, right? Or I would record audio over it if it was important. Uh, whereas, yeah, I, I mean, you guys get it. I don't have to explain it to you. And yeah, you were looking at the desk for a little bit. Well, yeah, because I, I had to go behind my computer to reach my USB cable. Um, But yeah. Can I get a sound level meter on the screen? Hmm. That is a good point. I, yeah, I might, I, yeah, it's, I probably need some other kind of setup that gives me alerts. It's, it's like, I honestly need like a second person. Uh, I need like a producer here, like a T, it's like I'm running a TV station a one man TV show. But when you actually look at a TV station, it's like 46 people all working synchronously. You know, it's it's crazy. But that is a good point. Like maybe the problem is like I can see it on OBS. So it's it's technically on my screen, but it's just there are 100 things on my screen. <laughs> and it's hard to to notice if one microphone cuts out because there's other audio sources as well that I, I have enabled that are separate. 
Um, it was close to 10 minutes. TV, I love it. You could see I was on fire. I was freaking on fire. Well, the internet did not want you to learn about all of the great tree facts that I was spitting. Man, I was spitting tree fact after tree fact. All about trees growing up in the shade of their parents and the, the different all the, the toxins and the different strategies that trees use to defend themselves and the different types of niches that they occupy and how trees are among individuals within a species more genetically diverse um, than uh, even more in some cases like two birches of the same species are more genetically different from each other than mammals of different species. Um, that were actually more similar to other, another species of mammal than like one tree is to another, even if they're, you know, from the same parent trees or whatever, but that's just the strategy that the, the trees employ because they don't reproduce as often as animals. And it, it takes hundred, it might take hundreds of years for a tree to grow up, you know, and actually reach maturity. Um, M matriity if i may so i was just telling you guys all about the trees and i was kind of really proud of it because i was so excited to learn and i was talking about how trees have like their leaves how deciduous trees like it doesn't really make like why would trees go through all the effort to grow leaves only to shed them every year you know con uh, conifers don't do that right so what are the what is it that the deciduous trees have figured out and why is it so successful well number one is that they can produce more sugar because their leaves are more, they, they can store more chlorophyll and actually more efficiently process light, right? So they can be more productive during the this, the, the summer days. Um, and, and then I talked about quaking aspen and how they even will like, right? Like flutter their leaves. A lot of trees, I think like silver birch will flutter its leaves as well. And that also enables the leaf to be even more productive because light is hitting both sides of the leaf. Um, and then when trees shed their leaves, that pro provides a great opportunity for them to like shed waste material as well that they can pump into the leaves when, the, when it is sealed off and falls. Furthermore, the leaves, when they fall to the ground, they, they provide, uh, they help create the ideal climate for the tree by helping to trap water in the ground and trap warmth, keeping the roots warmer and less likely to, to freeze um, and, and, and creating, you know, maybe more or more acidic or less acidic conditions um, within the soil. There's a lot of cool stuff like that. And uh, in uh, conifer trees, they also shed their leaves, their needles, but just at a different rate. Um, but they have a different kind of, you know, they have different things to deal with. Cause also if you're growing leaves only for the summer, you don't have to worry about winter, whereas conifers, they have to protect their needles with using and so they have to create like antifreeze compounds to pump into their needles. And that requires effort, So they aren't losing the needles, but then they have to make up for it by protecting them during winter. Also, having those needles creates more surface area for snow to fall on it all. And importantly, it creates more surface area for winter storms. And, um, and so, yeah, right. Like that's why also with, um, deciduous trees losing all their leaves makes them very aerodynamic. So when during winter storms, they're less likely to lose branches or, uh, fall over. Um, and you know, there's a lot of, a lot of cool tree facts that I was so excited to share. And now I'm just kind of sad that I was rambling for like 10 minutes because my mic broke. <laughs> No, you guys shut up. Should we tell should we tell him that he's muted again? I am looking at the microphone. I am looking attentively at it. And Lorelai, at least someone is on my side here. <laughs> yeah, it would be ironic if sound gets muted again. Oh, yeah, that would be. Uh yeah. It's a hard life, you know, it's hard being a streamer. <laughs> that was a test just on how much I would freak out. 
Well, basically, I know that anything written by 27 in the chat is just, you know, it's not that it's bad, um, but I take it with a grain of salt. That's that's the expression we use in English. I take whatever you say with a grain of salt. I discount it before uh, believing it. Um, yeah, I've learned that the hard way. But anyways, yeah, so I don't know why we were talking about trees except birch bark. Oh, you know, the whole reason I thought about this is because um, one of the reasons that birch bark is actually such a great fire starter is precisely because of this uh, toxin, betulin, that it pumps into its into the bark. I don't know if I cut out when I was talking about that, but um, that it's a type of oil that burns very, very bright and readily. So um, if you want to start a fire, just take some birch bark and that that usually lights up pretty well. And that's in contrast to bark of other trees like oak, um, other trees that grow in a, a forest and that rely on defenses that are more communal, right? That rely on coordination and cooperation among the trees and maybe the fungus networks um, to identify if one tree gets sick, signals get sent out either through the air or the roots that let the other trees know, hey, we've got a beetle infestation. We need to produce the, the toxins to protect against that. Um, whereas um, birch doesn't have that benefit because it's a frontier species and it's constantly colonizing new areas. And so instead of relying on a community of other trees to communicate with, those pioneer trees are just like, screw it. We're growing fast and we're just going to pump our bark full of uh, toxins and whatnot. And in the long run, it means that the trees don't actually live that long, but they, if, you know, they occupy that niche within the, the ecosystem of colonizing new areas. Um, and, uh, and so, and they do that quite successfully. So they don't need to be as long lived as other trees that basically wait until, you know, there's an opening in the canopy. And then, um, yeah, that's, and there were so many other things I was talking about, like, I didn't mention, I'll tell you this, and I didn't mention this actually when I was muted, but um, redwood trees, right? The the redwoods in California are like the tallest trees. And it's, it's like a marvel that they're so tall. And like 150 years ago, some uh, redwood saplings were brought back to Europe. And um, after 150 years, which would be plenty of time for the trees to grow, as tall as um, the trees and in, in the, as their California counterparts, they they haven't grown even half as as tall. And uh, and and the reason for this is that they were brought back as kind of exotic spectacles that were planted in parks and redwoods uh, in order to grow tall. Um, and actually, for almost any tree to grow tall and old, it needs to grow in the shade of its parents. Um, and, and part of that is because during its youth, it needs to put on slow growth. And when a tree grows slow, it's producing cells that are much smaller. Um, and the wood is much more dense, which makes it, um, uh, more, what is it more effective at repelling disease and whatnot. Whereas the redwoods, um, hold on. Actually, I think the music stopped. Let me, let me replay that for you guys. The redwoods that were brought back and planted in parks, they grew quick and fast, but they didn't grow tall because when you grow in the shade of uh, your parents, the only way to get to the light is by growing up. Uh, and so they have to keep gro producing growth upwards rather than than outwards. But the trees in um, in whatever these redwood trees in Europe and parks kind of grew into these like doped up bodybuilders, right? They're just big and, and chunky. They have really thick trunks and lots of uh, what are branches around around the base because they got light from all, you know, they had a lot of light. But but then there's a problem with a lot of urban trees because they don't grow up with the benefit of the forest. They don't grow up. And when one tree gets sick, um, it's not connected to a network of roots. And whereas in the forest, if a tree gets sick, it, it, it loses all of its leaves. It will still be supplied. I mean, not definitely, but depending on the tree and the species or whatever the fungal network is, 
many trees during their time of need still get uh, sugars sent to them through the roots. Even when a tree has been completely cut down, um, the stump can stay alive, even if it's below the soil. Um, as part of this root network, it'll keep receiving enough nutrients for it just to just kind of hang in there for, for maybe even thousands of years, which is kind of crazy to think about. That's, yeah, that was what I was, so I was having my existential moment, all right, and you guys weren't here for it. I mean, you were here, but my microphone wasn't letting you in on it, and that... <laughs> Oh, no, your brother had a good laugh at me. He's not interested in a lecture with sound. He was only interested in the the embarrassment, the, the cringe, the cringe moment. Oh, TB, that's why you're short. <laughs> that was a good joke. I like that. <laughs> well, that's why I'm short and fat. <laughs> that explains everything. I don't think it's quite the same, uh, plants and animals, but you know, but I think that's also actually the important thing is we think of like, I don't know, plants almost as objects, but they grow up, they've evolved to be social. They evolved to, to coordinate and, and cooperate with their own species and with many other species in the same way that at, like we rely on all sorts of other bacteria and whatnot, like in our gut. Um, to to help us survive it's yeah it's incredible i was having my moment talking about that i was really excited because i yeah i love the forest and i love yeah learning how it works get tall by growing in shady places good advice this i mean at least for if you're a tree it is good advice it's very good advice um yeah, and like I mean, there's so many crazy things about trees and their defenses, and like, like, uh, what is it? So, like, what is it? What am I trying to say? Birch and aspen, because they're frontier species, they'll grow up free of competition, right? Um, but then it means they don't have the benefit of a forest community to protect them, either from disease or from like uh, weather, because their trunks are more exposed to the sun. They're they're more exposed to the wind, so they have to employ different resources. But then once they once whatever that those trees have colonized an area and formed a kind of forest, right? A, a kind of new growth forest, that's when all the other trees show up. The beaches, especially. Beech trees um, are they they specialize in just growing up and growing taller than all the other trees and then out competing them for light. Um, and so the, in order to prevent this from happening, or at least to postpone it as long as possible, the birches and aspen ha are also really good at whipping their branches around, uh, in the wind and it knocks the leaves off of those other trees that are growing up above them, <laughs> which, which slows their growth so that the birches and whatnot live just a bit longer uh, kind of before they reach the end of their cycle and the in the end of their place within um that ecosystem because then all the other trees the trees that specialize in forest you know like denser forest environments they actually take root um and and they're and they're grateful for all the hard work that the birch and aspen have done in producing you know a thicker hummus and and then, of course, when those birches and whatnot die, their trunks are a great, um, whatever, right, resource for the forest there. But if parents are not good, you also grow in their shadow. So either way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Either way. Who knows? <laughs> are you? It could be explained either way. Um, well, you know, we spent a lot of time. We, we didn't even finish the penguin's journey, right? I just want to, okay, let's just quickly look at it. So then it becomes this like box 
This is also a very finished thing. I don't, this isn't very common in the US that ice cream gets sold in a box. I don't think I've ever seen that. I'm sure, I'm sure there's an exception and some company does that, but I don't, I don't remember. And then we also got a new, whatever this, what the heck? I was like, oh, is this actually something they sold? It turned 80 years old. Wow. And then in 2016, Proneri is uh, born. So it's actually pretty new. And then it explains something about Nestle. Um, and then over here, what do we got? Some other stuff <laughs> that I'm too... I, I'm too lazy to translate. Uh, and then wait, we oh it I know okay yeah so I know is another brand. Okay so I know yeah that's what it was referencing up here is ten years. Um and so I know uh, gets a new packaging is that it yeah these are really common. Oftentimes if you attend some event or something and you get sent home with some leftover banana bread or something. It's usually packaged in a in one of these uh, recycled ice cream containers. So thank you for that. I know giving us <laughs> giving us containers to use. Um, and then in 2021, um, Eskimo, the Eskimo ice cream family, something 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 uh, something. Okay. <laughs> And then in 2022, we got classic brand or the classic brands, new uh, packaging. Interesting. Okay. And new receptica Re recipe. I don't know. Well, thank you for entertaining that. Um, I do actually need to do my finish on Duolingo. So let's, let's do that. Even though I, I try to end my stream around nine o'clock. Um, I feel like we should do a little bonus time because, yeah, you guys just, my mic just broke and you stuck around. So thank you for that. Um, here we go. Let's, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> Finally. I, yeah, I don't think I'll be doing like, oh, I'm going to force myself to speak Finnish today. I feel like we did enough. All right. On kuuma paiva. It's a hot day. Uh, come on, e. Come on, eat. Olme naista vimuile, koska vauva naura. See you soon. Nähdään uh, pian. I w yeah, I thought it had two as at the end. I don't know why I questioned myself there. Lisa etsi sisukasta poika ystävä. Lisa is looking for a sisuli boyfriend. 10 minute bonus time. That's what I'm talking about. Also, just for those of you that follow my gaming stuff, I did play some Zelda off stream on Sunday. Because it Zelda's also a game like you can just spend so many hours in and it's just chill. So, but I will say that I didn't play any of the main storyline. I'm saving the main storyline or for stream. But I also kind of feel like, man, I don't know if I can stream the whole game because it's gonna be over 200 hours probably. Because Zelda the game is huge. So I'm kind of just saying, well, you know, I'm gonna do some of the shrines and the you know, just like side side quests off stream. And then the main stuff we'll we'll keep doing together. So just a little update while I was thinking about it. JR, you missed. Oh man, you missed the drama. I was going off on a tangent about trees, and then my my microphone muted. And because I was on my tangent, I said, I'm not reading chat until I'm done with my thoughts, and then I'm gonna look. And I was talking for like a good 10 minutes. Muted. And people were just posting in chat saying, like, I love. <laughs> we can't hear you <laughs> but it's not my fault it was just a technical glitch and i don't really know what the cause is i'm gonna i assume it must be something about this microphone 
It could also be this adapter, the USB adapter that I'm using. But I don't know. Yeah, JR, it was pretty awful. It was cringy. All right. When I realized the mistake, oh man, my I could feel it in my gut of just like, oh my, no. Oh no. I need to, I should like, because I've been learning some computer programming, I need to come up with a script or some program that like flashes a red light. <laughs> I wonder if I could actually implement, you probably wouldn't even need to program much, but like even the physical light on my desk that turns on and off to indicate that sys all systems go is, you know, green. And then if something breaks, you know, or if one of my things in OBS is not, is not working, then it turns red. I don't know. Yeah, sees the chat going crazy. Well, you know what? I mean, you guys were posting, but it wasn't crazy. It was just, I thought you guys were excited that I was talking about birch trees and that Deep down in your Finnish souls, you were like, I have something to say about birch trees because I grew up with them and they're my they're my friends. That's what I thought. And I was going to read it. But. <laughs> oh. Australia. Australia linen. It's just such a. Australia linen. It's a weird word. It might be Australia linen, but I think it's just Australia linen. Um, Laulaya. Aole. Um, Pitka. Right? Oh, it's just Pitka with one A. Yeah, because I'm referring to a person, not a quantity or something. But then I get it confused with like, uh, if you use an, a negation verb, but then again, maybe that's only if you're talking about not having something, not, not being something. It's not easy being a streamer. I, look, your, your mistakes are very visible. All right. That's <laughs> you, you, you know, that's tough. Uh, you're crazy about trees. You know? Um Tolo on Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over it's like there are a few uh dark clouds over there. Mu tamatuma pielvi. What a stadium. Mika uh stadion. Blank Han Minowa. Um, Rakastako. We have only 12 seconds to midnight. Um, Mela on Vine. Taxi Toista. Sekuntia. Taxi Toista Sekuntia. Miksi he eivät halua hmm, televisiotia? It's just uh, tuota. Why do they not want that television? Tuota televisiota. Is it even on? Onko se edes? Yulta. Um, Lahin Silta on Melko Kaukana. The closest bridge is quite far. Oko Perhe. Um, on? I think it's on, but it could be Ovat, and I don't remember. You got to say my pronunciation of Finnish is really good. Well, thank you, JR. I appreciate that. Um, 
Though sometimes I do bust out my southern, my southern cocoa pear hay. That's how we talk down, down south. Uh, Coco Perge on Mariasa. Um, okay, I was right. I There is another way of saying this, or a different construction. I think it's like Kaiki. Kaiki Ovat. Like, all are. But I would... I Tran I t in English, I tend to translate Kaiki to everyone. And then in English, it's everyone is. Right? And then I, I mess it up. And also because I think of Kaiki like Perhe. Like it's a collective noun. Like, But, you know, it's it's Ovat. Maybe it's also fine to say on. With <laughs> Immediately 27 is mocking my... Pronunci pronunciation coco bear bear hay <laughs> Vlad you've noticed that I sometimes say the word right but type it wrong with double letters really that's interesting I don't know if that's just a coincidence that I happen to be pronouncing it because the, the problem might not be that I'm pronouncing it correctly, intuitively. It just might be that I'm not capable of pronouncing it any other way. <laughs> and it just so happens my default pronunciation is the is, is sounds correct. But of course, I have no idea which one I'm actually saying. That's that's probably the likely scenario. <laughs> I would like to think that somewhere deep down I've subconsciously internalized the correct pronunciation. Um and then the, the spelling is just catching up to that, but that doesn't make any sense. Because if I actually knew the pronunciation, I would spell it correctly. Me olemme ostoksilla. We are shopping. I guess I am wrong. I know Kai, but I always... I don't always know what, where to put Kai in the sentence, but I think I, I messed up this one, actually, last night. And I think it goes at the beginning. Kai olen varassa. I guess I am wrong. I am in the wrong. Okay. Good. Um, Kaiki is all or everybody. Yeah. Um, you need to, I need to teach you a Southern accent, JR. Well, you done come to the right spot. All right. All right. All right. All right. I've already, I've given this advice out actually. I don't know if it's advice. It's more of a recommendation. If you're interested in Southern accents, watch the TV show, True Detective, the first season with Matthew McConaughey and, um, oh, What's that guy's name? The other guy. Woody Woody Harrelson. Uh, and they do a really great job in Louisiana. And you'll get exposed to some really interesting southern accents. Like accents that you would never hear outside of Louisiana. Like the people that have that those accents. It's like it, it, they, they rarely leave. <laughs> I, actually, an interesting fact about Louisiana. I don't know if this is still true. I assume it is. But of all states in, in America, Louisiana has the highest uh, retention of its residents, or at least like fewer people leave Louisiana than any other state, as I, I guess as a percentage of its population. The people who are born in Louisiana are more likely to stay there. Uh, and I... Uh, and, and True Detective does, a, I think, a good job of presenting certain accents that I never hear, especially because you hear like a stereotypical Southern accent, which is more like Georgia or Tennessee or something. Um, whereas the Louisiana one is, or I say one, but there's many accents in Louisiana. They're so weird and different, uh, but they're very distinctly Southern in a way as well. And actually you'll notice that if in New Orleans, um, there are some accents that almost sound like they're from Brooklyn. That's a really weird phenomenon. There are 
parts of New Orleans that have an accent more like Brooklyn, New York. I, I remember reading this somewhere as well. It's not something I'm just making up. I can't remember what the the logic or explanation was there, but it's it's weird. I should look into that again. Um. Lulen Olevani Varasa. Does that mean I guess I am wrong? Is that also a way to say it, TB? Or it was sarcastic, I guess I'm wrong. Kai Olen Varasa. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lulen is like, I reckon. Olevani. Well, that's a word I haven't used, but I kind of. Olevani. Varasa. There's like so many weird things about I just in Finnish that just seems so it just it feels like a language that just keeps unfolding like some fractal, you know, some mathematical fractal that just keeps subdividing. And once you think you understand it, you zoom in and then it turns out there's this whole fractal pattern that's totally different. And you're like, where did that come from? Why is that? Why isn't there just like one way to say it? You know, why are there like 97? I understand that any language can have multiple ways of saying something. But why is it the case that the way I'm learning it, nobody says it that way, apparently. <laughs> why am I learning a ghost language? Am I learn? Is it like Latin? I'm just learning the dead form of a language, you know? All right. It's like you're trying to learn Italian, but you you have a Latin textbook, right? Like, I guess it's going to help you with Italian, but it's not Italian, right? That's kind of how it feels sometimes when I'm studying Finnish. Um, what's the rarest category on Jeopardy? Contestants with Southern accents. So what do you... No, no. <laughs> I reject that, okay? Uh, look, look, how much has French affected the accents in Louisiana? Um, quite a bit, quite a bit, especially Cajun. Cajun has definitely affected, I mean, because Cajun comes from the Acadians in Canada who, uh, Led Canada, I think during a time of religious persecution, they were Catholic and they came south and they settled in Louisiana and they brought their, their Cajun, I guess, Acadian French with them that then developed into Cajun. And very few people actually speak Cajun French now. Um, but the, but the English that they spoke is very influenced. It doesn't sound like a French person talking. Not at all. You wouldn't think, oh, this is like English with a French accent. It's it's but they will use some French expressions. Um and and so yeah. And obviously the food is quite influenced by by the French, I guess, cuisine or way of cooking. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm wrong? That's not right, right? Your literal Finnish brain just started to think that means Mina Olen Vara. I am wrong. <laughs> well, uh, uh, being wrong is just like my my default. It's you know, the you know for me studying Finnish is part of like my existential experience. It is the daily reminder that I know nothing, right? And that the more that I think I know, the more that I realize, the less that I know, the more that I don't know. I'm like Socrates, except not, not nearly as quippy and intelligent <laughs> or insightful. I'm just the bad, the bad parts of Socrates. <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay well no that's not entirely true uh darling Kulta. i want to be near you <laughs> oh, 
Palawan. <laughs> I was trying to come up with some clever thing to say about the sentence, but it's not really that good. Um, I want to be near um, Lahel. Inawa, parted of. Boom. There we go. Bada can also mean that you or yeah, that you're crooked. You're literally crooked. Not just like figuratively wrong. Ah, I'm crooked. I'm broken. That's just me. Talking about cuisine, when is my cooking stream coming? That, I mean, it's a good idea. It's certainly a good idea, and maybe I should just set it up and do it. But... Oh, I have a question for you guys. Okay, I know there are all these stereotypes about places. What do you guys think about Kerava? Honest thoughts about Kerava as a place to live. And uh, the reason I bring this up is because I have been thinking of moving. I like Helsinki and I don't think I want to move far from Helsinki. But I might prefer to be in a, a quieter area. Um, and because my work is so remote, it's not like I have to be here every day in the city center. Um, and I can get a place with a little bit more space, you know, cheaper rent. And I saw one place in Kerava that was like, it had a balcony and a sauna. And it was like, it actually had an, it was like, it's confusing in English because a one room is studio, but in Finnish, a one room apartment actually is a separate room. It's not a studio, but it has like its own little separate bedroom. And I was like, oh, that actually seems really nice. And like, it was a place that allows pets and it was close to the train station. I don't know if that's good or bad, but it was, you know, so it was like kind of close to the library. I was like, oh, that seems I'm not saying I'm going to go to this move to this apartment, but it struck me as a nice place because that little balcony that overlooked kind of a green area. And then I was like, maybe when I go for runs, I'll get to the forest sooner. I mean, I like running around Helsinki, but sometimes I'm just like, oh, there's too many people and too many cars. It's not the people. It's the cars that annoy me and constantly crossing roads and not knowing if a car is going to stop or just run you over. And all the dust and the exhaust and the fumes and people smoking. And when you're running past someone who's smoking, it's just like, oh, you're, oh, it's the worst. I just want to be in a place with fewer people. So that's why when I saw Kerava and I was like, huh, I'm looking at other places as well. I'm not even like, I'm not even really committed to the idea of moving. Cause I like, actually like my place, you know, and I like, I don't hate where I live, but I'm just, I want to look at other options. So anyways, okay, let me see what. What do you guys? <laughs> Lorelai, violence. <laughs> you know, I think part of it is like, hmm, I always take certain, like that comment through a certain lens of like, well, I mean, if it was anything like America, <laughs> you know, I'm like, for, if it's violent for Finland, then it's probably like pretty tame. Um... What is this? Oruto Paita in a place where you only go if you are lost. Wait, what does that mean? Oruto Paita. Lorelai says the prisma is nice. Vlad, not that bad, but you're originally from Yadavanpat, and Kerova is older town and feels more like a proper town. I have heard that Yadavanpat has a kind of rivalry with Kerova, right? Um, what? YouTube just ate the last comment. Which one? I don't know. My camera. Is my camera frozen? I mean, it looks okay. On my OBS. I hope it's okay. Um, TB, you're saying move to Ita Helsinki. I've, I mean, but I've heard so many. I mean, I've also thought about moving to Espo. Or even like maybe a little further out. Part of me likes being near the sea and having the islands, you know, but 
But I don't know. I mean... I don't know. I looked at Portavo. And I did... All, and there was like... Yadavan Pav, of course. Tusula. It actually seemed like a cool place in Tusula. That was pretty cool. But I, I don't want to be someplace where I have to get a car. Or if getting groceries is going to be like a 20-minute walk. You know... Or even if it's just a bicycle ride, it's still, you know, if I have a lot of groceries, I might, it might not be easy to use a bike. So I still, I guess I still want my life to be pretty similar in terms of walkability. And that's why when I saw this place in Kerava, I was like, dude, everything is right next to it. And like, since it's close to the train station, I could just hop on whenever I do need to come into Helsinki or just to see friends. It's 30 minutes on the train. Like, e like. Even if I'm going across town in Helsinki, that's 30 minutes. All right, just just the process of like walking and taking trams and whatnot can take that long or longer, you know? So I was like, oh, like 30 minutes is, it's like, I don't even need to commute every day. So it's like barely even a consideration. But, um, Toroku in internet is being partial. Oh, to you, Lorelai. I don't know. Maybe, wait, I saw one comment you said that maybe was it the violence one that you mentioned? I mean, I can still see it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it got deleted for you guys. I'm not sure. Actually, let me see if I change my top chat to live chat. No, I don't see any other, any other comments that got deleted. I don't even know if it's possible for me to see. But anyway, sorry. Sorry about that. You, maybe you were just being really honest about the, the issues that Kerava might be known for. And YouTube was like, nope. <laughs> it might, you know, it can flag a word like, like I could see if the word violence might get flagged. Um, so maybe that was it. I don't know. Um, oh, it was one about Prisma. Um, yeah, and Kerava is near Helsinki. Yeah. When you're a teenager, there's the rivalry, but not when you're an adult. Porso, Kerava, Yadavanpa. Never marry a railroad man. What? <laughs> what? How about some area in Vanta? Um... I mean, of course, there. Are, like, yeah, I haven't like ruled out areas necessarily. Oh, it's a Finnish song. Okay, I was like, I don't know if I get that. I'm thinking about it, but there's more train stops in Kerava than other towns outside of the capital area. Oh, is there really? Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> but Toroku doesn't even have trams. Yeah. Yeah, Tampere has a tram. I did look at some places near Tampere. Like, there was one place in Nokia. I was like, I could move to the mobile phone place, you know? How about you, Vascula? Actually, 27, I did see some places there as well. But there's part of me that's like, oh, I don't know if that's a little too far. But there's also part of me that's like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to move out into the forest. I don't know. I'm... I'm torn. I don't feel like there's an obvious solution or an obvious answer that would like uh, meet everything I want. Because, yeah, I mean. Um, Espo is getting a tram soon. Oh, really? I feel like I heard about that. Is it does it is it going to go across Lautasari? Is that where is that the direction it's going to be heading? Or is it different? It used to have them is now considering trams again. Lorelai, do you mean for Turku? Is that what you're referring to? Or is that Espo? Did Espo have trams? I don't think so. But yeah. Well, I just wanted to get your opinion. Uh, I did, oh, because I have talked about Pori. And everyone has reacted. Um, what's the word for it? Vehemently against my Pori consideration 
Uh, it's the ring tram line. The the Yokari tram from Itakeskus to West End in Espo. Really? Wait, Yokari? <laughs> Does that is that a joke? <laughs> is that what? Or is that actually a word? I don't know. Um, I know there was like the whole, the Metro kind of became a joke in Espo because like it was always supposed to be done like within a year. It's like, oh, it'll be done by, by the end of next year. And then that just kept getting delayed year after year. And then someone made a joke about it online and I think it got a lot of attention or someone made a poster or something and put it where the, the Metro was supposed to be. It's Yokori, that means Joker. We've talked about this, JF. Please do not move to Pori. <laughs> you guys want me as your neighbors in Uvascula? Yep. Well, you know, I don't know. I'm I'm not really disappointed with Helsinki. But there are times where I'm like, I kinda wanna switch things up, you know? Like I've been in my my apartment for over two years now and I, I don't feel like I I make what is it it's not like I go out that much you know I don't really take advantage of like oh the like the nightlife here or like having you know a job that I have to go to in the office every day right so it's like you know I might switch things up, get a little more space and and to be in a place where I could consider getting a dog. I really would like to get a dog. That would improve the quality of my life significantly. And so I've been looking at apartments that allow pets. So I was like, ooh, actually. JS, wait, you've helped your sister move. And now playing a game I know. Oh, wait, JS, did you just join the stream? I thought I didn't know if you were like making a joke or something. No, welcome in. <laughs> and the game must be Zelda. Um, I hope it's Zelda because I have not been playing today or yesterday. I did play a little bit on Sunday off off stream. Uh, but yeah, I should, I want to play tomorrow, so I'll be back. I'll be back for a Zelda stream tomorrow. I've lived in an expensive concrete box for two years now, pretty much. I, though I will say that as far as rent goes, to, I don't know, my, my perspective is very different having lived in American cities where rents change drastically. Like you could be... Like, like where I'm living now versus apartments on the outs, like kind of on the outside of Helsinki. Like, it's not like I'm paying twice as much. I might be paying honestly 10% more per, if you like per square meter. And that's not considering the amenities. Cause I actually think I got a good, pretty good deal with how nice my apartment is. You know, with the and because I'm the kind of person I, I really like to cook and I use the kitchen and everything that it makes a big difference for me that the appliances are like pretty nice. They don't have to be brand new, but like it can't be. I don't know. You know what it's like, right? When you especially when you're young and you live with a bunch of roommates and this the stove is like burnt and, and you know, and like uh, it's just gross. And there are some like a lot of the apartments I look at are kind of like that, I'm, like online when I'm just looking, I'm like, nope, I don't want to. I don't want to. Ha <laughs> I will literally just say no to an apartment by looking at the stove. I'm like, does the stove make me feel depressed? No, I am going to Marie Kondo this apartment out of my search listing uh, <laughs> criteria. Uh, but anyways, yeah, no. So. I, yeah, it, it, the, the difference between like living in the city center versus like a bit further out, it's it's really not even that big of a difference. 
The difference would be if you live with people. Like if you live with people, it's way ch you can get much cheaper, right? But even then, it's not. I don't know. It's you know. Anyways, I'm I'm, I'm kind of going off. I'm not really. I don't, I don't feel like I'm really entertaining you guys. <laughs> I'm just asking questions and then and then just rambling. I'm probably gonna end the stream pretty soon here in a second. Um, you watch videos of a YouTuber who shows rental flats in New York City, and yeah, the rent there is high. Yeah, like even when I was in Washington D.C., oh my gosh, it was awful, super expensive, um, a terrible place to be a student. <laughs> Looking back on it, it's like, oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, 27, yeah, Uvascula, I know, is much cheaper. Because I saw the, like, when I see rents in place like Pori, for example, like Pori, maybe that's why the rent is so cheap, because for some reason, Finnish people hate it, and I still don't understand why. You know, like, I still, I'm like, what makes Pori so different from any other random town? But I don't know. I also saw Olu. I was like, maybe I should do Olu. Just move super far. <laughs> just, just go up north. Maybe I should just plan like a northern year. And I just say, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to go and live all, like up in Lapland or something. You know, just spend a year way up north. And just make it a thing. And but with the idea that, OK, I'm not going to stay there. But it's just going to be my year abroad, my year abroad in the Arctic Circle. That'd be pretty fun. In the darkness, look, it's only dark in winter. In the summer, it's actually dark here, relatively. And I remember the, the the few times I've been in Lapland have been in the summer, and it's magical. When the sun is out all night, I love it. It just, I feel so alive. I just feel like every day counts for like 10 times as much. I don't know how to explain it. It's like the richness of life feels exuberant. I love it. It's, it and, and yeah, sure, like the winter might be tough, but I also actually like the darkness. I'm be, not always, but I like how it makes things feel cozy and it feels like you, you and everyone you know has an excuse to be antisocial and to not worry about trying to make an effort to do anything together, you know? And it's so nice to go home at like 4 p.m. or to stop working at 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. or whenever and just be like, it's bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time that I just eat something and just watch a movie, play a game and go to bed, read a book, you know, that to me is ideal living. All right. So that's what the winter provides. And I think the important thing is not so much because you could do that any other time of year, but the winter makes you feel like you've earned it or at least like you deserve it. Or you shouldn't feel bad for being antisocial. And that's the, I need that kind of external validation from the universe, right? To let me know that deep down my antisocialness is actually an asset and something <laughs> right? that, that it's okay to just stay home and do nothing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I guess if you do have problems with the dark, don't move north, Lorelai. That's true. 27, you just posted a picture of a similar kind of house that you have. Let's see it. Let me look. Oh, cool. Yeah, you mentioned, yeah, it was two, two floors. Three rooms and a kitchen. Also a sauna and your own backyard. Oh, my gosh. Vivitalo. That sounds really nice, man. You're living the life. I need to look into that. Rivitalo, row house. Yeah, I was. I also saw like terraced houses as well. I'm like, huh, that could be interesting. But I don't know. What is wrong with Pori is a bit like asking what is wrong in a town in the U.S. Rust Belt. 
<laughs> is it really is Pori really that rough <laughs> i know that apparently people from Pori have a specific accent that that is weird or something i don't know <laughs> yeah tb summer is the time when you should do everything and it's a relief when fall comes and you can just take it easy i, I love having the seasons like that yeah having that it really makes a difference to feel like a cycle throughout the year rather than kind of having the same tropical I'm sure it's fine in tropical climates as well. You know, it's not like it's one is better or worse, but I like what I have here. I like having the seasons. Um, but yeah, the accent thing would be Rauma. Really? Okay. But yeah. Well, this is good. This is all really good advice. So there, it didn't seem like there were any like super strong reactions against Kerava. Um, but then, yeah, in that area with Yadavanpad and, and whatever other towns are around there is interesting, but I, I might even plan a day trip and just go visit and just see, I'm like, would I actually, you know, is this just like the realtor marketing strategy, right? That they present like, oh yes, you, this, this is the best place for, you know, and the, then you get there and you're like, oh, this is it, you know? So I, I actually probably need to go and I need to go visit the light wherever I'm moving. I need to do a recon assessment of the library. <laughs> Yesterday I went to the library. Let me just hold on. This is going to be the last thing. Look how many books. There's like 12 books in here. I don't know if you can look. I know it's like a small screen, but it's all books. It's books all the way down. Got books on. Oh, you can't see any of this. In my defense. In my defense, I returned a few books, but it's not my fault. It's not my fault. I'm just making use of the library and the public services available to me. All right. And they're all really good nature books. So that's just how it is right now. I'm, I'm, I, I need to find a way to keep my Helsinki library. Actually, that, I was looking into Kerava, and I, I could see that there's like interlibrary loan. So I'm, I still might get like Helsinki uh, access, so to speak, right? They could still send the books all the way to Kerava, but it might just take longer if I, I put a book on hold. Yadavanpat has a nice library. Uh, and Porovo is also really nice. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about Porovo. I didn't see as many listings from there. There were a bunch. Yeah, a lot of listings that were just coming from like Yadavanpa and, and Kerava and Tuusola, kind of in that area. A few like Espo related. Some in Vantha, but I don't remember actually now thinking about it that there were that many Vantha places. Um, I think Sipo was another one. And then, yeah, there were a few in Porvo, but not as many. I mean, but this is also just like, you know, I'm just doing a quick search and then and just kind of browsing and uh, I could rant. I hate it. And this is all this is all I'm going to say. I hate when housing companies, the specifically M2, M2 just pollutes the postings. They post a bunch of listings all at once and none of them have pictures of the apartment, but they put a picture of the outside of the building so that you think that if you click on the listing, that then you'll see the inter interior photos afterward. No, no, they're not. You're not going to see anything about the apartment. And I'm like, why is it even here? Like, oh, like, I, you know, I. And, it, and it's not like you can limit the search to that. Also, another thing I hate, those companies 
listing the apartment at a fake rate. So they'll be like, this place is only 430 euros. I'm like, what? And so I click on it because I'm like, that's there's got to be something wrong with it. And then you look in the description and it's like 430 euros for the first month, after which it goes back up to its normal rate of 862 euros. And you're like, <laughs> there should be a law. Like, it's fine if you want to give a discount on the first month, but you can't list the apartment at, at the discounted price. Right. That to me just seems like against the rules of marketing like that's that's false advertising. I mean, I get it that it's written out on the post, but you're just pollu like the process of searching for a place is hard and you are complicating the the knowledge that consumers need. You're obfuscating the consumer intelligence and the an efficient market relies on consumers making informed intelligent decisions and i can't do that efficiently if i keep seeing all of these fake listings essentially it's a fake listing and i i think we need more regulation against it that's what i that's what i'm proposing all right that's my platform that's all i care about all right okay so i gotta go back Oh, Lorelai, you're originally from Eastern Usima, so you like Porvo. Okay, that's why you're a little biased, I guess. But I've been to Porvo, and I think it's nice. I don't know. I, I mean, I was only there for a little while, so I don't know so much about it as a place to live. But I've heard it's good. Um, And TB, Porvo is not good if you want to come to Helsinki without a car. Yeah, that's another thing. I think I haven't looked into all of the connections. I mean, Kerova is great because it, like it's on the train line, you know, and I, you can just, it's super easy. And then Espo is not so bad. Uh, it's more like buses, you know, or, or now there's the Metro, but, but yeah. Um, what someone's been shopping in S market. Wait, what is that? What's that reference to him? I, oh, oh, the, the bag. I've had this bag forever. I do go to the S market though, occasionally. I'm more of a K market guy because I'm fancy and I don't know, <laughs> the K market's more convenient than S market for me, but yeah. Tampere has a great main library, Metso. I wonder if I've been there. I've been to Tampere a couple times, but I can't remember if I went to the library. I might have, but I have, you know, everyone that's told me about Tampere has said it's great and that I should consider it. Uh, you can go by bike to Porvo. That would be kind of far though, right? Lorelei says buses exist. That's true, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess, yeah, the public transportation's not like really that big of an issue, whichever direction I go. I guess the main thing in that case for me is more like, and how far is the walk to the nearest grocery store? <laughs> Do I have to walk, you know, a kilometer? That's that's just not going to cut it for me. Like, I don't, I don't, that's too much. But like, if it's, yeah, I don't know. I mean, even if the library is a bit further away as a, as a kilometer, that's less often. Like grocery store, I really like having close by. That's a quality of life thing that really makes me happy. Um... Anyways, yeah, sorry, I'm just thinking. I know we're just talking about all sorts of stuff now. Um, apartment pictures without even the floor plan are very annoying. Lorelei. Oh my gosh, I hate that. Yeah. I hate it. It's also like such a thing now. It's like they'll they'll renovate an apartment and then they'll take photos of like the living room and make it look really nice. But then they show the kitchen and it's the saddest, most pathetic little kitchen. It almost feels like a crime against the apartment that the that it has such a uni, miserable kit. Like Golem himself would not even eat in that kitchen, right? Smeagol would have more decency within himself to go find a cleaner and more sane place. Even just the layout of the kitchen will just be like this cramped little corner with odd angles and and the cabinets all open into each other. I'm like, how 
how is this allowed? What were Finnish people like back when this building was built? And they were like, yeah, this is our, the consumer demographic. We're just going to give that. They don't need kitchens, apparently. When, when Finns are getting, purchasing their home, they don't really want to have a kitchen where they can cook. They just want to have like the, a trashy, <laughs> like, you know, like, I just don't, I'm not saying that that's actually what Finnish people like. I just don't understand how the kitchens can be so bad in no space. Like where would you even chop vegetables? You know, at least a little space for a toaster. I mean, come on. <laughs> Is that too much? And I guess what's confusing is like that's in apartments. Like I understand when it's like that in an, in an apartment that's only like 20 square meters, because like, where are you going to put a bigger kitchen? It can't fit in the, a tiny ass studio. But if you've got an apartment that's like 30 or 40 square meters and the kitchen still is like that, I'm just like, oh, oh. and some of these apartments that I'm like, they're clearly apartments where like fam a family could live. How could anyone? cook for a family in a kitchen like that. Oh my gosh. I don't, sorry, I'm a little, maybe I'm a little overreacting to it from a gut perspective, but that, that really kind of bothers me. I, it kind of angers me because I'll see an apartment be like, oh, it's a great location. Oh, it has a nice balcony and like, ah, that actually, oh, but the kitchen just looks like absolute crap. And I would, I'd be miserable in that kitchen. Yep. Sorry. Can't do it. Or the bathroom, the bathroom will look like it was built for a like insane asylum. You know, I'm like, who designed this? Who designed a bathroom to look this like, oh, I don't know what word to use, but just like, not even like sanitary, but like. Like, like this is the bathroom that would be at like a concentration camp or something, you know, like it's just, just like concrete laminate painted the, the like drabbiest colors. Everything is just, uh, I, I just, don't. you know, it's like everything about the apartment will look nice, except for some reason, the bathroom and the kitchen will just be trash. And I'm like, these are to me that that I have a lot of priority on those things because that those are things that I use every day. I don't care about having fancy things or going out for fancy dinners and like, or even have fancy like furniture. Like I get like secondhand furniture, but like the bathroom and the kitchen need to be nice. There's my rant. There you go. Sorry, Sipo and Kerava are also are part of HSL. Exactly. Yeah, that was another reason I was like, oh, that's that makes it so that it's a bit easier, I guess, for connections. Um, so I don't have to buy an, a separate ticket to Helsinki. JS, it's 50 meters for you for the K mark. That's really good. That's like just, you know, like on the pretty much on the same block or across the street. Oh, Lorelei, but if one step on the Helsinki side of the border, the zone changes. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. 27. You have 76 square meters. Wow. That's big. I can't. That to me, that's a mansion at this point. <laughs> I, well, there Actually, I have looked at some apartments and I'm like, you know, that could work, except actually, I don't know if what I would do with all that space. One room would just be like a dance studio. <laughs> I wouldn't have anything. I don't have any furniture. You know, I mean, I have some, but not enough to fill a whole apartment. I don't know if I want to do that. Maybe I'll just have a dance studio, a yoga, a yoga studio. You know. JS, you live alone in 77 and a half square meters with a proper kitchen, plus three rooms, and a bathroom, and a sauna, and a balcony. You're just a bajillionaire. Man, living in the lap of luxury. But no, I mean, it's all in relative in some ways, right? I mean, of course, having a lot of space can be luxurious. Um, but I mean, when I chose to live here, it's like, I there are times, I will admit, 
when I leave my apartment and I'm walking to the library and I'm just so happy that I get to live here in Helsinki and especially in these neighborhoods uh, in the city center. They're so beautiful. And I, and I, in a way I feel very at home here and even thinking about moving outside of Helsinki actually makes me kind of sad, even though part of me really wants it. There's a part of me that's like, ah, oh, there's just something very grounding about here because this is so much of my identity has been formed here in the city center that it's kind of hard to separate that, you know? And even for being, you know, the city center, it's nothing like, I don't know, living in the middle of a city, like in the U S where there's like no parks, it's just concrete and parking lots and asphalt, no pedestrian walkways. The sidewalk just suddenly disappears and you have nowhere, you don't know where to go because you have to like, are you going to walk in someone's like lawn? Are you going to walk in this construction zone? And it's, you know, <laughs> whereas here it actually, even though you're like in the city center, it still feels like such a livable place, which is, oh, which I really appreciate. Um, but Lorelai, you got 25 square meters. That's kind of like mine. I think mine's a little bigger. I think it's like 27. You got a small kitchen compared to your 18 square meter apartment. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you guys remember back in the day when I started my YouTube channel, I lived in a 17 square meter apartment. It was, it was so small. I filmed videos underneath my bed because I had to get one of those loft beds from Ikea because there's no other way I wouldn't, there would be no space to move. It was, that was crazy. And now I think about it, but I managed and I was pretty happy there. I'd say that year that I was in that apartment was one of my golden years here in Helsinki. Uh, a lot of good things happened in my life at that time, but yeah, um, crazy. Crazy to think about living in such a small place. Oh my God. Yeah, my kitchen was so small. One of the burners didn't work. And so the landlord gave me one of those like portable burners. You know, so I had like an extra, like whatever stovetop, you know, <laughs> but, but there was no counter space to put it on. So it's like, I had to like make space for it someplace like I had a, I, I got one of those tables from Ikea that can fold up into the wall. And that would come down. That was nuts. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, 27, you've got, you got two other guys you're living with. It is nice to have like roommates sometimes, you know, like if you get along with them, it's like, it's, it can feel like such a great situation. Having other people around, I think is important for, for being healthy, right? It's part of just being a social animal. Yeah, this is normal. Oh, JS, it's normal where you are to have a ginormous apartment. <laughs> Vlad, you've got 37 square meter, small one bedroom flat and closest shop is S market, 196 meters. That's not bad. I love how you say it's a small one bedroom flat, but from my perspective, 37 sounds spacious <laughs> compared to everywhere I've lived. That sounds, oh man, that's an upgrade and the S market 196 meters. Oh, what a deal. Um, Lorelai, your fridge got an ice box and some shelves. Nice. Yeah. The freezer, um, TB, you've some small homes compared to what houses are in the U S. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Compared to like the homes I grew up in. Cause I grew up like in the suburbs, you know, in those like kind of in those like aspiring McMansion neighborhoods where like there's this, like these developments where all the homes are basically designed and built by like one developer. And so they all kind of look the same and, but they're all slightly different, but they're, they're big, you know, they'll have like four or five bedrooms. Um, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, JS. Yeah, you can't think if you live in, in another city. You love loft beds. Well, I No, living in a loft changed my mind about loft beds. And actually, that is a selection criteria. If there is a built-in loft in the apartment, no, I'm not doing it. No. Climbing up into the bed, it just changes. That's that it, like going in and out of my bed is something that it's a daily activity. And I put high priority on that being enjoyable. And I do not enjoy climbing up and out and hitting your head on the ceiling, you know, cause you've only got like this much space from where your bed is to like, it's just not enjoyable. And the other thing you don't think about dust. All the dust that accumulates, or just that happens naturally, like maybe just on your socks when you're going up the stairs, that that dust is going to accumulate and then fall down on, on, if you have a desk underneath your loft bed, which is what I had, it was constantly getting dust on it. And I've seen it where the stairs, and this is the worst idea, and it, it grosses me out even thinking about this, the stairs go over the kitchen. Like the loft bed is above the kitchen. And I'm just thinking, this is the dumbest design. Because like now my kitchen has no ceiling. And I'm like hunched in it. It's dark. It's cramped. It doesn't feel nice. It doesn't feel like a nice place to cook. Right? And worst of all is that now I've got dust raining down onto like the kitchen counter and appliances. And it's like, at the very least, I mean, a dusty desk is one thing, but a dusky, a dusty kitchen counter, that's gross. You know, I don't want to constantly have to be like worried about, I don't know. That's just that. Yeah. Selection criteria. Get it out. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> maybe a loft bed is fun in theory or like on a holiday or something, you know, like at an Airbnb. But on a day-to-day -day basis, no, I don't like it. Um, wait, Vlad, you do remember the flat? Oh, yeah, from what my video, but you didn't know it was so small. I think that's the the illusion the camera creates because it's like a wide angle lens. So, it you know, it creates it makes the space feel bigger. Uh, so, yeah, it was really small. Actually, and it was the bathroom that was even the smallest. Literally, you would if you took a shower, you you showered with the toilet. Like there was no way that you could. The way it was positioned, it was just like you were standing literally almost on the toilet. Like there was a little space for you to stand next to the toilet. But I mean, it meant that the toilet was clean because you were constantly rinsing it. <laughs> right. Well, there you go. Uh, that was a, that was an interesting time. Um, yeah, sorry. The there's an 80 song called living in a box. Maybe that's pretty relevant for me. JS, you've lived 20 years alone, 20 years of freedom. That's what I'm talking. The older I get, the more I'm just sort of like, you know what? Maybe the, maybe the solo lifestyle really is for me. You know, I, that window of opportunity of young love is is quickly fading. <laughs> right? Falling in love looks very different in your mid to late 30s, I think, than uh, in your mid 20s. And, um, you know, that's fine. It's fine. I think that's kind of encouraging to know, like, you don't have to, like, have those more, I don't know, traditional things or more things that are more culturally approved in a way, in terms of lifestyle. I don't know, JS, what do you think? You let me know. Maybe you have, maybe you're like, don't be like me. <laughs> you can let me know. Uh, what? You J are 27. You have only one other guy there. Your twin brother. Wait, I thought you said you had, there were three guys in the, in that apartment. Or did I misread that? Vlad, did I grow up in a proper McMansion? I would say yes. Kind of. I mean, the thing is, I moved around a lot as a kid. Which I think also was probably not the best thing. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, we moved a lot. 
like I was born in Colorado and then we moved even within Colorado to different houses. And then we moved to Mississippi. I lived in Mississippi for a year. And we lived in multiple places there, even within one year. And then we moved to San Antonio in Texas. And actually we did live in one place for a while. And now that I look back on it, that those, those early years when I was in Texas are kind of like the golden years of my childhood in a, in a way, when I was like seven to 10 years old. And we lived in one place there and that was really nice. But then we ended up moving again by the time I was in high school. And then we only lived in that place for like a year or so. It was, it was very McMansion-y because it was like on a golf course kind of thing. Um, but then we moved to an even bigger place, which was kind of confusing because at that point we were like graduating high school and moving out. So it was like, why? Oh no. But yeah, if, if, yeah, the, those homes are, are just, they're cavernous. It's almost like haunting sometimes when you're in one of those homes and you're just sort of, you're just sort of, it just can feel, I don't know. But, um, and JS, your loft bed was 80 centimeters wide. That's not wide. That's like a twin bed, right? And you said it was 80 centimeters wide. So you had one, but you don't have one now. How come? I guess you have so much space. It would, <laughs> there's no reason to go vertical. Vlad, you don't like loft beds either. Being sick and having to climb up to get to the bed. Yeah. 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 I think, yeah, loft beds are kind of fun for a holiday. Like, I can imagine it's like part of like the Airbnb experience. You know, you're just staying at a cabin and there's a bunk bed. Right. But like on a day to day basis, it wasn't for me. Um, put mirrors in strategic places to make the house look bigger. Yeah, that is true. I mean, people do that. That's a like, that's why elevators have mirrors in them. You've taken so much of my time today. I should go to sleep. That's true. It's past 10. <laughs> I should have stopped an hour ago. <laughs> uh, um, I will go to sleep pretty soon, but yeah. Uh, Helsing had a ton of public saunas in the 60s, and that's why old flats have small bathrooms, because people went to the sauna? Really? That seems so weird, though. Like, even if I went to the sauna, I would want to come home and, like, take a proper shower. I mean, would people, would Finns bring all of, like, there are toiletries and everything with them to the sauna or would that just be provided there and they were like i'm fine with whatever public toiletries are there you know not that i'm very picky but it just seems like like once i once i have my setup you know and my system and my routine it's like i like having it just that seems weird that people would actually do all of that in the public sauna versus but you know, I don't know. There, I'm sure there's. I'm sure there's also some very good explanations for why. Oh, it would have increased the cost of construction and blah blah blah. Or I don't know. Maybe also just the way that they've been adapted makes it look worse than it actually was back when it was built. I don't know. Yeah. But ceiling mirrors. I don't know what you guys are talking about. That's weird. Uh. You said two. You went me. You just met you and your brother. Okay, I misread it then. Sorry. And then, of course, when you're old. Oh, okay. The older brother is visiting. You have three. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, eighty centimeters is half of a twin bed. Is it? I thought like it's. I don't know. I I thought like one twenty is kind of like a standard full bed, a full bed, but only for one person, which is, I think what I have. And then there's like the twin, which is like really only one person. Like you could not really fit two people on there. Whereas that full bed, you could fit two people, but it's kind of tight. It's snug. 
Um, JS, you had a loft bed when you were living in a 60 meter a student apartment. Yeah, 60 meters. How did you how did you survive? That's so cramped. Oh, God, thank God you had the loft bed. <laughs> you walked into that apartment when you first got it and you're like, there's only four rooms. Oh man, we how are we gonna fit everything? Oh, gotta get a loft bed. Only solution loft bed. <laughs> Uh, maybe it just had a giant bathroom. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Half of a queen. Oh, okay. Yeah, what's smaller than a queen? I think a full is smaller than a queen. But I think a full is only 120. Yeah, a full is 200 by 120. And then the queen might be... 180 or maybe it's 160 maybe the queen is 160 and then the 80 is half of a queen yeah and jess it was actually a normal bed but just with tall legs <laughs> it sounds like you you just had like a one of those like four post and you know, like king size bed with the posts that go up and like you can put curtains around it like you're in some victorian era you know, a Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. You're like living in the. You're. Are you a one of the royalty or something? Yeah, there's like a House of Lords here in Helsinki. Is that where you hang out? Um. And you didn't shower every day those days, really. Wait, even in like what the '60s when they were built? But maybe, yeah, maybe that was the case. Working class flats that had no shower and just a toilet. Oh, man. That's tough. And thank God for collective agreements. <laughs> thank God we're trying to improve the middle class here. Or, or at least we were. I don't know whether we're still doing that here in Finland today is another question. But... We still got it pretty good in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, you can you can make the 80 centimeter bed work, but it is tight for two people. Oh, JS, actually, the bed was made with your father when you were living with with you were living at your koti koti, the at your home home, your parents' home, in your own room. That's really cool. That's cool. You had that like project together to make your own make a bed um and then you, you then you took it that's nice um in 27 you posted in the discord earlier a picture of your ikea mom double bed let me see oh that's right because that was the bed we tried to recreate in stardew valley i also actually i had a mom when i was living in dc that was the bed that I got from Ikea. I really liked it. I really, I wish I could have brought that back. Yeah. It sucks when you buy furniture and then you move and you can't really take it. And you're just sort of like, you know, it just feels like, ugh. it's hard. It's hard to keep reinventing your, <laughs> your furnishings when you move across the globe a couple times. Um, Anyways, yeah. Yeah, Americans, everything, even beds are big. Well, I'll have you know, most of my childhood, I grew up in a bedroom with twin beds. So I had two beds, but they were not together. They were separate. So I always had, I always just slept in a twin bed. It wasn't until I think I was in high school that I actually got like a larger bed. And then in college, because I lived in a dorm, I, I went back to a twin bed because that was just, it was this, we didn't get a choice because it was the standard furniture you had to use in the dorm. You know, that was, that's what I had though. Um, yeah. And even actually when I moved back to Helsinki uh, at the beginning of 2020, I was in a twin bed. And that was because, you know, I was living with a friend uh, whose uh, kids had just kind of grown up and moved out of the house. 
So he rented one of his kids, uh, one of the, yeah, he, his kid's bedroom to me, basically. But I still had like that furniture there. So I was, I had the twin bed, you know? I don't know. I, 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 it's, you know, I don't know. It's, you kind of just take things as they come, right? And you adapt and it's just part of your life in that moment. And knowing that like, it's going to change eventually, right? You'll move and things will be, be different. You just got to cherish those moments. And I really enjoy living with my friend. He's, he's a really cool guy. It's nice. And it was, it was actually really lucky that I'm glad I was living with someone when the pandemic happened, because then it was like, man, we were really sealed off. So at least I had like someone that I enjoyed hanging out with, <laughs> you know, that, that was, uh, that was really important. And so I, th I think I'd like to think he also would think he was lucky that he had rented a room out to me and that I was a source of entertainment for him. <laughs> uh, but we're guys and we don't talk about that stuff. All right. <laughs> um, what else? Sorry, I'm get I'm. Tr I just want to. Yeah, King is even bigger than the 180 centimeter bed. Really? Oh wow. And Vlad, up until the 1960s, I guess the, the flats, yeah, in, in Finland. Um, yeah, the Koti Koti and JS. 114 shrines, oh my, and 106 light roots, 82 seeds, 22 hearts. You're nuts. You're nuts. I love it though. I love that you're nuts about the same game that I am. And for anyone that doesn't know what that means, that's all um, Zelda. <laughs> that's the new Zelda game that I will be playing tomorrow. I, I have to say when I was like I, earlier around five o'clock, I was like, oh, I'm going to stream in a little bit. And I was like, man, I just wish it could be Zelda and not finish. <laughs> but I know that so many of you actually like you prefer the finish stream, right? You're here for the finish stream, not the Zelda, not the Stardew or the other video game streams. But there are times when I'm like, I just want to play a game, you know? <laughs> I don't, I don't actually dislike the finish stream. Once I get into it, I'm fine. But in the moments leading up to it, I'm like, could, it just, could I just play Zelda today? And people, would you think people would miss the finish? <laughs> but yeah. Oh. oh no, 27. Your jokes. You're just out of control with your... <laughs> um, am I finished with Duolingo? Here we go. Hold on. Let's hit continue. We get the horn of completion. There we go. We did it. We got the link. One whole lingot. Duolingo has gotten stingier with its lingots. I would like to point out. I think they realized some some person realized that, oh, we can make more money if we give out fewer lingots because it turns out that the majority of people who get a dumb super subscription are people like me who foolishly forgot about their streak right and they 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 go to the shop you go to the shop and you have your streak freezes equipped Oh, but then you forget about it and then it disappears. And the only way to restore your streak after it's been lost is to repair it w with a subscription. <laughs> and so they were like, we should give out fewer of these lingots because you have to spend lingots. Actually, I should be spending this because I do this all the time. Right. So I'm sure they found out they were like, oh, we could make more money. So, you know, it, well, well, whatever. I don't know. It's not really something I actually care about that much to really rant about it. And maybe it, it didn't, it doesn't turn out to be true. Who knows? It's just speculation. Um, You've already played this more hours than Breath of the Wild. Really, JS? That's impressive. I remember I was listening to a podcast, um, but the, the streamer that I follow, his name is Limcube. 
he he was a breath of the wild speedrunner and so when this game came out i was really excited to to watch him play and he, in his casual playthrough he put in like a hundred hours already in one week i'm like there's only what is it 178 hours total in a week and you and you spent more like over 12 hours a day that's in one week you, like well actually what what's that that's like 14 hours a day pretty much right seven times 14 is about 198 that's like 100 hours it's just waking up starting your stream at 8 a.m stopping your stream at 10 p.m go to bed and one that was great one week 100 hours in one week that's nuts um yeah it's not a joke 27 oh no i oh don't yeah now that you sh don't tell me that <laughs> don't tell me that um yeah in lorelei yeah you gotta head off thanks for thanks for joining the stream i'm gonna end the stream actually pretty soon here so thanks for the prompt there yeah and i will be back next week for another finish stream and you're one of the Finnish stream weirdos, which I appreciate. I, I actually, I need this kind of, um, what is it? Tradition in my life. Um, oh, microtransactions. Yeah. Uh, that I, yeah, it sucks when games do that. Thankfully it's not in Zelda yet. Um, Oh, you've been watching named, someone named Croton play Zelda. I haven't heard of Croton. I might look him up. Or her. I don't know. But yeah. Um, but, but on that note, I will be back tomorrow most likely. I think I should be free tomorrow um, to stream some Zelda. So if you're interested in just hanging out, come join the stream. Um... But if not, then, you know, I'll be back. He, okay. Yeah, I, Croton does sound kind of like a dude. I'm Croton. Unless you misspelled Crouton, in which case someone could be like Le, Le Crouton, you know? They could, that has a more feminine, I guess. <laughs> Maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> you got to go too, Vlad. Yeah, yeah, thanks everyone for, for being here. It's a, it's a nice stream, despite my tree lecture being interrupted. And me not noticing for five hours. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks, TB. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, we're learning. We're learning. And I'm still motivated to learn this language. So I'm not, I haven't given up. Even if sometimes it seems like I'm going to throw in the towel, <laughs> my frustration level reaches a peak, you know, but I'm here. So yeah, maybe with that, we'll end it. And, um, hmm. That's good. That's a good place to end. <laughs> Thanks, TV. Yeah, I I am doing I'm doing well enough. You know, I'll, I'll get there. And I have an idea. I'm not going to share what it is, but I have this idea to supercharge my learning. I don't know if I'm going to do it, but I'm going to end mysteriously on that. And maybe I'll do it. Maybe the idea would be I could do it when I when I'm on holiday in June and July. Um, I might. I might do it and make a video out of it. But I maybe I shouldn't even say that because I'm terrible at following up on those kinds of uh, <laughs> suggestions. <laughs> well, yeah, thank you. Um, oh, in the cooking stream. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. There's so much that uh, we got to do. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Um, work at a farm. Who knows, Lorelai? I, I'm not going to say. And I don't know. Maybe it's going to be more... <laughs> You guys are going to come up with better ideas than probably what I already have, but uh, we'll see. It occurred to me on one of my runs, I was like, it would be kind of fun to try and do this. Maybe I'll do it. And it's an idea that's kind of percolating, but I don't want to say it because it's too early to let the idea out. And it might be something fun just to do without anyone knowing I'm doing it, and then I just make a video. Um, and that way, at least I have an out. If it turns out being really bad, I don't have to post it. <laughs> But who knows, maybe that's also part of what would make the video interesting. Um, 
yeah, it's summer. Things to do. Well, yeah. Well, thank you guys for being here. Have a good rest of your evening and rest of your week if I don't see you in a stream until uh, next Tuesday when we do this finish stuff again. Um, yeah. Take care. Bye.